What's up, everybody? Hey, what's going on? It's Mr. Christopher with the Funkatopia Radio Show. I hope that you guys are ready for tonight. We're going to have a special guest, Greg Boyer. For those of you just tuning in, we are actually going to be doing, uh, this is a pre-show. We're starting about 12 minutes early, so if you want to go right to the show, then fast forward 12 minutes. We'll make sure that the actual posted video gets that 12 minutes uh, shaved off. But I wanted to, I like to come in a little bit early and say hello to everybody and uh, get questions and whatnot out of the way. I hope everybody is doing good. It's always good to see all you fine folks and Funkatopians. And uh, man, it's going to be a lot of fun. Michelle, how you doing? Cami, hello, hello. Sandra, hello, hello. All you fine folks. Cherry, hello. I love seeing all these same names every single week. It's fantastic. It means you guys are committed or should be committed, either one. Uh, Veronica, hello. Cami, awesome. What, uh, oh, the shirt that I sent you. Yeah, I actually ordered the um, the broccoli, the broccoli writing on the carrot on the celery. I actually ordered that one, so I'm hoping that I will get that soon. I was hoping that it would happen for this show, but I don't think it's going to come. Maybe I might get it for the next show. I don't know. It's going to be awesome. George, what's going on, brother? Barbara, hello from Montreal. Actually, hello from Atlanta. You're calling from Montreal. Charlotte, what's going on? Aaron, hello. It's all good. I hope everybody is feeling good tonight. Lori, hello. Garfield, hello. Todd, what's shaking? It's going to be a lot of fun tonight. We're going to have a good time. Revolution86 is in the house, giving us a little bit of YouTube action for sure. Again, if you guys are just joining us, you probably want to, well, if you're joining this after it's recorded, uh, you want to fast forward 12 minutes to the actual live show. But we are live right now, so there's not going to be anybody that you can actually, um, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> uh, uh, what's up, Nisi Red in the house from Chicago, Sandra. Sandra says the MPG was amazing in Minneapolis on 930. I would love to hear some of that. Andre, what's going on, big dog? They're cutting trees down in Andre's neighborhood. He's very upset about it. Michelle, what's going on? Oh, Michelle had a root canal. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I hope, uh, I don't know if this is going to make it any better. This may be just like reliving the root canal all over again. Uh, George said, ran into Greg at the Funketeers Ball. That's awesome. Oh, Ed, I keep saying Revolution 86. I didn't realize that was you, Eddie. I'll, have you told me that before? You probably told me that before. I don't know if you told me that before. I'll try to commit that to memory. I got to make sure that I turn off my phone. Make sure that I uh, mute certain things. And I didn't get an opportunity to, um, I did not get an opportunity to hear from Greg today. I sent Greg the information, but I had not heard from him yesterday. I didn't hear from him today. So we're going to assume that he's got a calendar and that all that thing is, everything is nice and it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Sandra says there was a, a Prince night at the Twins game. They had Prince jacket and cap. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Eddie, no, I'm not flying solo tonight. Actually, uh, Jeff actually had a little bit of an issue. Jeff, um, I guess some plumbing burst in his kitchen that was underneath his kitchen floor. And uh, he had to, I guess the people were coming to fix it tonight. And they were actually going to be having a jackhammer in this whole shenanigan. So they're going to be digging up his kitchen uh, in order to repair this uh, plumbing. Luckily, he's a renter. He's not a, a homeowner, so it's not going to cost him anything. But it's still going to cost him the ability to tune in tonight for the show, so that kind of sucks. Um, oh, Cammy said you picked up 18 different vinyls today. That sounds awesome. Steve, what's going on? It's in Sacramento, Northern California. Uh, but and, and also, to finish your question, uh, Eddie, Rob will be joining us, and I made a slight adjustment on the uh, on the audio, so I'm hoping that everything is going to work out okay, and that I don't have to switch it back. Uh, if I had to switch it back, I'll switch it back. It's all good. 
Uh, you may also notice that tonight I'm not wearing glasses. Um, I actually have contacts in now. I was going to do LASIK, but they told me that I couldn't do LASIK. Uh, there was something something going on with my left eye. That they could not do LASIK, so I ended up having to get contacts. I, I can see everything okay, but it definitely doesn't look as good as it does with glasses. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Michelle said she got her Funkatopia hat today. Awesome, awesome. Rob Rhythm will be joining us in a minute. We go live in six minutes. If you guys are just joining us, this is the pre-show. If you're joining us, if you're tuning in on YouTube for the very first time, please make sure that you click like uh, and subscribe so that you guys can actually know what's going out. Um, and so just let me know um, if you have any problems or whatever, but like, subscribe, do all this stuff. Same thing with YouTube. I mean, uh, Facebook. Make sure you follow the page. It's going to be awesome. Hey, Drain's in the house. Andre said, is under the impression that if I drink some wine, I'll, feel, I'll see better. I don't think that's going to be. Ah, uh, Sandra, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You rock. Nikia said she thought it was a haircut. Yeah, no, it wasn't a haircut. It's all good. Um, Yeah, tonight's going to be fun. We're going to have a good... Um, Uh, we just a second here. Uh, making sure that everything is going okay. Everything is. Um, Jamie says she's beginning. Uh, Jamie's going to get getting an echo test done next Monday. Oh my gosh. Uh, hey Donna. Hey, hello again. I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. Um, what did I see? Oh, Donna wants to know what's next. So tonight we're going to be joined by the one and only Greg Boya is in the house. So Greg is going to be joining us tonight, and uh, that ought to be fun. And then um, next week, the one, the only, the legendary Eric Leeds is going to be with us in house tomorrow. So, oh man, look, I got my zip fizzes in the in the thing. You guys want to know what I do for energy? This is what it is. Energy B12 right there. That's my zip fizzes. Uh, I'm going to take those out of the pic take those out of the thing. And until they actually become a sponsor, I can't give any I can't give any free advice. I can't do I can't do free pro product placement. <laughs> it's like I'm, I didn't even I didn't even get all this stuff ready. It's crazy. Uh, I hope everybody's doing good tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some fun. Rob's in the house. Let me make sure that he's uh, can hear me okay. Rob, what's going on, man? Huh? Hey, what's I, up? Great. This is perfect. I'm so glad I can hear you. I'm glad you can hear me, too. It's good to be heard. Yeah. It's all good. I'm glad that I can hear you. I made a slight adjustment. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Rhythm's in the house. Um, I made a slight adjustment. Right here. I can't do it. And I made that adjustment in my microphone spiked through the roof so uh now obviously i'm going through this microphone right now in the camera but um you know I, when i switch over to the live one oh this is the last song and then we go live oh we got one more song that's a mere three minutes away oh my gosh i'm glad oh, yeah. you can hear you everything's good um so jamie is having some heart issues and so uh oh, yeah. <laughs> Elena says Mr. Christopher is about his paper. Uh, you just missed it because I, I had like a random piece of paper sitting over here and I grabbed it and threw it on the ground. That's what she's referring to. Oh, okay. I thought she was talking about so, that money. Yeah. But we are going to be having some fun tonight. Uh, show starts in a mere two minutes. I can't believe it's already uh, here. So... Anyways, so, you know, I have not been following. I was just saying that I sent the invitation out to um, to Greg tonight with the link and everything. And he uh, he did not respond yesterday. And he didn't respond today. So it was like, I, I, I don't know what we're going to do for a show. <laughs> Maybe we'll just talk about Greg the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he doesn't show up, we'll be just like, 
this is some cool stuff about Greg. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Yes. Ja so Jamie has some, a little bit of heart issues, so he needs some prayers. So we'll make sure we get some prayers up for Jamie. Hmm. Make sure that, uh, Hey, I, I see you restructured this. Like I don't puppy. know what it means, dude. Um, yeah, we, what we can do then, it, 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 if something happens, we can obviously uh, get the phone and we can open up the phone lines and just have a free-for-all night where everybody calls in and just talks and asks questions and does whatever. That's that's a good idea, Andrew. We can do that. Uh, yeah, I was actually going to do that tonight for the show, but uh, normally whenever we do call-ins for – uh, when we have guests on, it's That's always good. really scary because you never know what people are going to say or what it just, you know, but it is what you? it is. Scared? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Though. We are, we're talking about tonight. We have the very, very special guest, Greg Boyer. And next, Greg week, Boyer! next week, we have Eric Leeds in the house, which is going to be amazing. Oh, I cannot wait. Yeah. To. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the uh, other microphone here real quick. So guys, give me just a minute. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? It's Mr. Chris with Punk Tobia Radio Show. Punk Tobia Live, actually, technically, tonight. It's tonight. Tonight, tonight. I'm so glad you guys are here and joining us. Welcome. to Punk Tobia Live. Punk Tobia Live. You're low in that mix, man. Very low in the mix. Let me to me. I was fine till you started messing with it. Yeah, I know. Welcome, welcome, one and all. It's Mr. Chris with Funkatopia Radio Show. Rob, you there? I am here. Are you there? I'm. I am here, and I can actually I feel like you. there's a delay on me. Is there a delay? No, not okay. anymore. There was for a second. I'm tired. Maybe I'm just a little delayed when I talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, we were just talking this. Uh, welcome to Funkatopia Live. I am Mr. Christopher, your host, the founder extraordinaire of Funkatopia Live. You're not just the founder. You're the founder extraordinaire. Uh, Damn. I guess you could give yourself any kind of raise or title you want when you're in yes, charge. With my illustrious co-host, Mr. Rob Rhythm in Ooh, the house. Illustrious. I do feel illustrious. Look at the luster. It's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's pretty freaking awesome. And yeah. uh, um, tonight uh, we have a very very special guest who I hope <laughs> will join us. Special guest trombonist Greg Boya is in the house. Oh uh, which yeah, is be amazing uh, to have him on board to kind of talk a little bit about Prince and NPG and the sleazy dance and a little bit of everything. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun talking. Yeah, I know you know what the sleazy. If you've been listening to One Night Alone, you obviously know what the sleazy dance is. We, I, I don't think I've seen. I don't know that he did the sleazy dance when he when they performed in Atlanta, or maybe he did and Prince didn't call attention to it. Uh, but everybody was dancing on the One Night Alone tour. That was just one of those amazing tours that just is you know. Yeah. <laughs> Same with musicology, man. I, I was I was up out of my seat from the beginning. I don't think I sat down. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I still want to get the bootleg of the One Night Alone tour in Atlanta where um I was dancing during Family Name. The first three rows of the MPG Music Club were all dancing, and I was like 15 rows behind that. And I was up dancing at family name and I looked around and nobody else was dancing. Everybody was sitting down. Everybody was sitting down. That's crazy, and, man. And I was I live in Arizona, which, you know, not like Atlanta at all. And we were all dancing. <laughs> I was only everybody. Of course, everybody, I was in the MPG music club section. So maybe I was just looking yeah, at the people around just me. Looking at people around you because yeah. when I, 15 rows back, I was, I looked around and I was the only one dancing. I looked in front of me. I looked behind me. I looked aside of me. Everybody was sitting down. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to continue dancing. And then Prince looked at me and goes, I see you back there. 
And I was just like, yes. So I am absolutely looking forward to, uh, I think I, I found a bootleg, but uh, I don't know that I actually got done listening to it. But I, if you do have a bootleg of the Atlanta show for one night alone uh, during family name, when he goes, I see you back there, he's talking to me. Um, so, anyway, so it's fun, but that also, and I've told this story, seems like every single broadcast, I think I've told this. Uh, I feel you have too. That, that I have, that I, I think I could I, almost I say it. Nice that I got to, to meet him. I, I yeah. think that should just be like a scroll on the bottom of the, uh, on the show. So that way I want to. <laughs> you know, what's funny is Boyer actually has a similar <laughs> tale. <laughs> similar what? He has a similar story about the first time he met Prince. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, anyway, so I sent him. I sent him the link for tonight's show. So hopefully he'll be joining us here very, very shortly. Uh, I did not hear from him yesterday after I sent it to him, and I did not hear from him today. So hopefully he's going to pop in here any minute, and we will uh, and we'll get an opportunity to bring him online and talk to him. And if not, we're going to wing it all night and just have a good time. Maybe we'll just tell stories about. <laughs> We're just going to make up some rumors. There's so. a lot out there. It's not always easy to find. I mean, he's kind of like a he's, he's kind of like a mystery figure in the music world, even though he's been a part of funk music for 40 years. Yeah, like exactly. So uh, I'm actually going to shoot him a quick text and uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what we can do here. But uh, in the meantime, in the meantime, uh, a couple of announcements. The first announcement is the first announcement is that we um, next week, next week we have the amazing Eric Leeds is going to be in the house. Eric Leeds is going to be here. Yeah. yeah, I almost got it that time. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Leeds is going to be in the. I mean, in the house, and we're going to talk to him about all kinds of stuff. I mean, you want to talk about somebody who has seen Prince in a variety of decades. Uh, in the 80s and the 90s and in the 2000s uh he has absolutely been there through pretty much almost all the phases of prince and so i really kind of want to dig deeper into that because he's he just got to see it all he got to see the transformation from from rude boy to uh not his root <laughs> jehovah's witness boy i don't know what what the title is uh Jehovah boy yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, God boy, just, you know, and I was just kind of curious about some of that. And I wanted to ask Greg about some of that tonight when he comes on it. I do want to, um, I do want to talk to him a little bit about if there was any ground rules that were kind of set, uh, when, when all this was going on, you know, I knew that there was in, when the two thousands came along, there was a swear jar that was implemented at Paisley park. And I remember hearing all those stories about Erica Badu coming in and she saw the swear jar and she just emptied out her pockets into the swear jar. She was just like, there's no way this is happening tonight. Uh, so I definitely want to see if there's some other I'd probably have to do the same thing. Maybe some rules and guidelines that, uh, you know, may have happened. I don't know. Um, also today, today, this very day, right here, Tuesday, October 5th, is the 31st anniversary of the UK release, technically. I don't know what the exact US release was, but the UK release of the Symbol album. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that is, uh, I did, we did a post on, uh, we did a post on Facebook. We were kind of asking about uh, what, you know, what your favorite song were, song was in regard to that album. We got uh, quite a, you know, we got some responses, uh, not a bunch, but, um, and God Created Woman was got a couple of votes, um, as well as Three Chains of Gold, Morning Papers. I mean, there's like a lot of great songs that are technically on on this album. Do you have a favorite on that particular album? Um, oh, geez. <laughs> Even though it's, um, I don't know, Melt With You, that's... That, well, that's the it, first one that comes to mind. I really loved Arrogance, even though it was like so short. Yeah, it's like it one just, minute and 35 seconds. So you've got... I just love so, it. But it's like New Position. I love New Position, too. And it was the same way. It was so short. And I was like, oh. Yeah, it's the same thing. Well, I mean, and every, <laughs> Rob will remember this. We used to make mixtapes all the time. And whenever <laughs> there was a really, really short, uh, short 
period of time on the end of the tape. You wanted to That's use like every single available second. It was always, it seemed like every tape ended and I wonder you. Always, <laughs> or I wonder you. It was either yeah. that or I wonder you. Yeah. So, uh, but for those of you who don't quite remember everything that was on the symbol album, there was uh, My Name is Prince is the opener, which is obviously fantastic. And he was fun. Uh, Sexy MF, which is obviously a great one. Love to the Nines, another great one. The Morning Papers. Oh, Love to the Nines is great too. Yeah. The Morning Papers. Mm -hmm. uh, the Max, which is uh, Funkenberry's favorite song. Uh, Funkenberry loves The Max. Uh, matter of fact, the. Prince Piano and a Microphone version of the Max is really, really fantastic, especially the one that uh, the final show in Atlanta. Uh, I can't wait till that's officially released. But for those of you who have heard it, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, Blue Light, I Want to Melt With You, Sweet Baby, uh, The Continental, uh, Damn that's You. That's also great. One of my favorite songs. Yeah. Damn You, Arrogance, and The Flow. Arrogance and The Flow are actually together. Technically, Damn right. You is kind of starts starts off that whole entire tri trio and it ends and he goes, yeah. that was for our lovers and this one's for the whore. Uh, whores, <laughs> plural. <laughs> uh, <and it> goes, <laughs> this one's not just one whore. in particular. <laughs> <laughs> not you know who you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, then it goes into uh, Arrogance and the Flow, and then uh, Seven, which is always a crowd favorite, and God Created Woman. This is a long one. Yeah. Uh, Three Chains of Gold, Segway, and the Segues. Segues. I was just going to tell that story. Uh, I remember exactly where I was when this album came out. Um, I was I bought the album. I had it in my hand, and Rob didn't have the album at that time. And I I was reading off the the songs. And for 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 whatever reason, I always thought that Segway was spelled S E G W A Y. That's I, so when I see it. <laughs> I was reading off the list of the songs. I said, and there's a couple of songs called Segue. <laughs> and he was like, I mean, segues? No, uh, you kept saying it. You would like, okay, well, segue. you I was like, here, I'm going to read the track titles off to you. Like we often did after we went out to buy the album or whatever. And you were like, and then Segue. Oh, okay. da, 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 segue. And I was like, what the heck is Segue? <laughs> <laughs> It's like Mr. And he showed it for me. I was like, "That's Segway, man." <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, that was a funny moment in history. Uh, there's always like little moments like that where it's like such an embarrassing moment that it like permanently scars you for your life. It's like, I'm fine. I'll, I'll never. Okay. Yeah, because you were on the. The the delivering end of that one, <laughs> when you're on the receiving end, <laughs> it's far more scarring. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So it's a lot of fun. You're the one who keeps bringing it up, man. I'd let you slide. I just, I, I just, I just always think it's funny. I just, there's like moments. It is funny. There are like funny moments that things happen to you, and you don't, or even when you don't realize it in the moment, and then you kind of go back and and um. Uh, I, I, I'll tell a story since we're waiting for Greg. Uh, there was, there, I don't remember how old I was, maybe uh, 17, I think, maybe. And I was living in Cabbage Town and um, in downtown Atlanta. Actually, I was staying in a church, um, believe it or not. And wait. It's a long story. It was a long okay. story. It wasn't. Yeah, this is it was, one I haven't heard, but okay. it wasn't like a nun uh, type of thing. I it just so happened that uh, my girlfriend at the time, um, she had an uncle who was a pastor of a church, and I I didn't have anywhere to stay, and she was like, "You're not staying with me." And somehow she talked her uncle into letting me stay at the church, sleep with the church, everything. Um, and he kind of looked at it as like a security thing, really, kind of be totally honest. Did you get paid? I did not. I, yes, with, with housing. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> you got room and board. And, uh, so, and oh, Julie. And so I got to oh, know. Um, I got to know everybody in. Um, I got to know everybody in the neighborhood because everybody's like, "There's that kid that lives in the church." And there was this one uh, house that had like a bunch of different people living in it. And one of the, there was like a few of us that were there, they were all going to this gay bar at the time. 
And I was like, look, I don't really think I want to go to a gay bar. It doesn't seem like a thing for me. I just, gay bar just doesn't seem like it's a, it doesn't seem like it's my thing. And he was like, it's okay. Here's, here's what you do. If you, if you, we can get free drinks all night if you do this. And I was like, all right, I'm listening. He says, if you, <laughs> this is like gullibility central. He said, if you 99% like women and only 1% like men that's called butch <laughs> and he said what? It's, it's, if you tell people that they'll leave you alone but they'll still be nice to you and whatever <laughs> so i didn't realize i was being played at this point so we <laughs> when we get to, we get to the we get to the gay bar i'm walking around the gay bar i walk up to the bar and uh this guy walks up to me and goes hey can i buy you a drink and i said Okay, but just so you know, I'm Bush. <laughs> and he, and he, very, he very quietly, he said, he goes, all right. And he looked at the bartender, he goes, make that a double. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so i've got plenty of them. <laughs> oh my god uh great stories my uh <laughs> there's there's actually a pretty cool gay bar in tucson i don't know if it's if it's still in business or not but uh back when i was visiting uh when i wasn't living out here and i was living in atlanta and i would come out and visit lewis he'd take me to this gay bar um, in Tucson and it actually was the coolest place. I mean, they, they played great music and everybody was really cool. I mean, you would occasionally like get, ha like get some guy come up and hit on you, but it was like, it, it wasn't like a big deal or whatever. They just like come up and be like, Hey, you want to dance? I'm like, no, sorry, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just here for the music. <laughs> and they'd be like, all right. And then I guess, I don't know, there's like some kind of hotline or whatever. <laughs> After like two or three times that happened, everybody was like, no, 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 they're straight. <laughs> Leave them alone. <laughs> yeah, you can normally tell. Um, and for those of you just joining I us. Might, I might actually. No, I don't think I did. I think, I think, no, never mind. I was going to say, maybe I did actually dance with a guy, but I just like told him I was straight and he was like, that's all right. I don't know, man. I was like 18. I don't remember that shit very well. Yeah, I, and, and as Rob will tell you, I've got plenty of gay bar stories, but none of them are going to end like you think they do. Um, <laughs> and and most of which I lipsticks was great. It was, we used to love lipsticks. Yeah, it's well, it's yeah. It was that was a that was a lesbian gay bar. Lesbian bar, but there's you can't really go wrong too much in there. It's just you know, <laughs> you uh, can if you think somehow you're going to make a difference. <laughs> Um, I, like you're gonna bring your I, penis I, 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 in there, and it's gonna make a difference. It's not. Don't forget, I've got stories. I've got stories. I know you do. You know I've got stories. So <laughs> I, I've done pretty well there. Um, <laughs> uh, Andre says we're officially gonna start calling you Butch. <laughs> I was just thinking, if we got to do a nickname for you, man. I you've never told me that story. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah no i i've got plenty sometimes of times i feel like i don't really know you well you i don't think you were no this was that's had to be before you, you and i you and i did know each other but i oh. this was more, one of my uh random uh walk about this was something you kind of like dropped off the face of the earth and i had no I idea realize. whether you were dead or alive I was, I was talking to my mom and she said i said because i was talking about my daughter um my 19 year old who disappears for like a couple of days, but I, normally she stays in contact. She's still, you know, text or she'll still call or she'll still whatever. And let me know that's, that's what's going on. Uh, so she kind of stays in contact either with me or, or my wife, but it's, <laughs> I, I, was no talking, I was talking to my mom about it. And uh, she goes, well, at least she wasn't you. And I was like, what does that mean? She goes, you would disappear for like two, three months. <laughs> I was like, you, you would did. never call. You would never, like, I would have no idea whether you were alive or dead or I was just, and I was just like, wow, that sucks. I'm so sorry I put you through that. <laughs> yeah, theoretically, I was your best friend. You would do the same shit to me too. I'd be like. Yeah. Jenny be like, have you heard from Chris? And I was like, um, no. 
<laughs> I was a little. I don't bit know of, if he's alive. I don't know if he's dead. I don't know if he lives here anymore. <laughs> I was a little bit of a vagabond. Uh, so I, for whatever reason that may be, I don't. I think that was the because I was born in '68 and grew up in the '70s. I think it was just, and that's the way my parents were. Um, they weren't really, you know, really. Um, uh, what's they weren't like gypsies or anything, but there was just a lot of random. I, it didn't seem like there was it, there wasn't any stability. So I kind of felt no like, I was like bouncing from one place to another, and I just never. That's that's no excuse. I was born same time period. My mom was definitely a gypsy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Completely nuts. <laughs> I'll give you that. Yep. <laughs> and uh, yeah, people generally knew how to find me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then you can find just the right sound clip. Uh, for those of you just joining us, uh, hopefully we'll be joined here shortly by Mr. Greg Boyer. I actually uh, been talking to him. He confirmed and everything was all good to go. I sent him the link yesterday. I did not hear from yesterday or today. So hopefully he will show up. In the meantime. Hopefully he's uh, okay. Yeah, I hope he's okay. That's the most important thing is making sure that he's okay. And if not, we'll reschedule. But for right now, just hang tight. We're going to just uh, just enjoy ourselves and, and tell some uh, fun stories and and uh, hang out with all you guys and just see exactly what it is that you guys want to learn from us. Uh, and as mentioned, next week, Eric Leeds is going to be here in the house and he is actually confirmed and um, I've confirmed several different ways. So I have several different ways to reach him. <laughs> so uh, we will have Eric Leeds in the house next week, which is going to be phenomenal. I cannot wait. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah, you know, I think... I tell you what, if Greg did not show up tonight, that would really kind of suck. Um, but again, I hope that he's okay. It would be a first for Funkatopia because I don't think we've ever had a guest not show up. Um, but hey, it's all good. We're, we're just having a good time. We're all hanging out and whatnot. It's all good. And the next week we're going to be doing Eric Leeds. We are, and the following week, we're gonna, it's going to be one of two things. We're, we're working on a couple of different things for the following week. Uh, the first thing is when I didn't talk to you about Rob. Um, <laughs> the first thing is is that we are well. The, what we're trying to do is we're trying to arrange a Third Eye Girl reunion right here on Funkatopia Live. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So that's what we're working on right now. But if that's going to take some little bit of uh, finagling schedule wise and everything else, uh, one of the topics that I have is Prince's WTF lyrics. Um, <clears throat> so basically. Having a, having a show that actually talks about uh, some of the lyrics that are in Prince's songs that either don't make any sense to you or maybe maybe was like, you know, like, for instance, soda fizzing on the lawn, <laughs> things like that. Exactly trying to go. Oh, he's in just there. dancing. But it's and, about these words. Yes. It's just trying to figure out exactly what he meant by some of those things. So it's, we're going to be d diving in deep. So obviously you have a little bit of time yeah. to prep. Uh, as far as the audience is concerned, a little bit of time to prep. So make sure that you there will be a quiz. Think about, yeah, while you're listening to Funked Up and you hear a song and you hear some random lyric, you're like, what in the world does he mean by that? Uh, then you can absolutely go in and uh, make sure you jot it down and yeah, share Brian. it because that's going to be an actual awesome time. Yes. Hey, what's going on, Brian? Welcome, welcome, one and all. Uh, as I said, we are going to be having. Problems, your shoes? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. Something fell. And That's I a problem. I, I never know. I never know what falls. It's always some random thing that falls. Uh, but again, we were. We hope. Hopefully, we'll be being joined by Mr. Greg Boyer, and shortly. But again, recap some of the news we talked about. It's the thirty-first anniversary of the Symbol album. I remember where I was when I was reading that CD to you. <laughs> reading the track listening to where were you Remember? this wasn't one of the ones that we went and picked up together mm -mm. i was i was i was living with the band in stone mountain and Which I, band? uh new reality <laughs> oh new reality okay right. and i was standing in the kitchen with the cd in my hand reading it to you and uh that's when that's when i was reading it to you so where was i i don't know in that seat, isn't that something? 
You know what's so amazing to me? I am horrible with time. I, I'm, I'm horrible with figuring out, you know, if you say, where were you in 1993? The best way that I can gauge where I was, if you tell me what was on the radio at that time. If you can tell me what was playing, what CD came out, what was released, what music was on the radio, I can tell you exactly where I was. I can tell you where I was when Follow For Now's album came out. I can tell you where I was. Every single one of the Prince's albums, I can tell you where I was when the album came out. And so, and that's really the only way that I can gauge time is, is musically. So I always thought to myself, you know what? Uh, I am actually in the process of writing a book right now, uh, believe it or not. And um, I'm not like amazingly into it, but I'm probably about 15 pages into it and uh, writing. Nice. Stuff. And um, More than one me. that I decided to do because of that, because of that mental block that I have is I wanted to make sure that um, I wanted to make sure that <clears throat> I listed the music that was on during that time, what music was happening during that time. Um, because I felt like that would be good for soundtrack purposes too, uh, as well as also, oh. just, you know, just, just kind of like a soundtrack to, to the story. So technically, uh, if I released a book, I could probably also put a Spotify playlist on that, uh, could be, you know, done as well. So, yeah. so it's actually pretty cool. Uh, speaking of which, I, I think I mentioned this. I mentioned this on Facebook too. Funkatopia Live is now on Spotify. Um, mm -hmm. I had to make some adjustments in order to get on Spotify. I had to remove album chats and whatnot, but I had to make some. Um, I had to make some adjustments for sure. But we are on Spotify. We're on mm -hmm. iHeartRadio. Um, we are on. Um, yeah, we're on like a bunch. Uh, Apple Music. We're on. We're on a bunch of different things. So it's actually, surprisingly enough. Now, um, what I can also do is I can also activate uh, Alexa to do the, sorry for anybody who's listening out loud and I just set off your Alexa. Mm -hmm. uh, I can also set off Alexa to say, Alexa, play Funkatopia Live. But the only thing about it is, is that, or you could say play Funkatopia Live on Alexa. And, but the only thing that's on there, would it's not the music. It's only the, the interviews that are on there since it's done via Spotify. So I can't technically, but we can go directly through Alexa, but that requires uh, a lot of people were asking me something. Hey, you guys talked about Alexa, you know, doing funked up on Alexa a long time ago. And the problem is, is that we have thousands and thousands of songs and the, music format has to be the the file format has to be really really specific it has to be laid out a really specific way uh everything has to be in there that the obviously the name and the title are in there but album album release date album um there's like a bunch of different stuff that that has to be in the file in order for your for it to, to properly get uh go through alexa because I guess because of the fact that it's wrapped into um, the ability to ask them questions. Hey, what, who sings a song? Hey, when was this song released? What album is this on? So in order for you to be able to ask that line of questioning, Alexa needs to know the answer for every single file that's up there. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, um, even though these are legal copies of some of these songs, well, some of the stuff, uh, they had to be formatted in a very, very specific way. Um, there's some songs that we do play on the station that did not see an official album release, just kind of, you know, we kind of push them out there. So we got to be real, you know, careful about that. We may have to clean up our broadcast if we're going to, you know, successfully get on there. But anyways, needless to say, we got to edit thousands of files in order to make sure that we can get through on Alexa. So it's, you know, it's a lot, man. It's a lot, a lot, a lot. So that all being said. <clears throat> you know, I don't know yeah, that's, um, so I don't know who we who could create our own like playlist, though, right? We could say, Hey, uh, yes, well, I mean, well, there's certain things you again, it's all just a matter of being able to to do all this. Um, it's just editing thousands of files, man, it's just so much work, it's just insane. And then on top of that, I'm still working on the Album Chats website. We have um, the Album Chats website where you'll be able to pick any of Prince's albums 
and you will hear the album chat for those uh, all those albums, including the songs. So it would not only be the album breakdown, but it will also be the song breakdowns too. So you can go into, let's say you can go into controversy and you can play the entire album chat. Or if you just wanted to hear the background information on sexuality or you wanted to hear the background information on Jackie Waff or anything like that, you simply just click it and it will take you to the part of the file where we talk about the background information, and the background stories of each one of those songs. All the album chats and all that recording is already done. It's just a matter of getting everything in there. Uh, but I'm also doing some file. Um, what's the transcription? So I actually paid for the ability to do yeah. some transcriptions, uploading all those audio files into a transcription uh, software service that transcribes the whole thing. And then I've got to go and kind of clean it up because there's a lot of things that aren't right um, as far as how it translates it. And then so because I want all the the text to be there as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So it's just uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so. Anyways, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm so, so looking forward to it for a show. And, um, you know, this is what it is. So, um, again, we're, we're still waiting for Greg Boyer to join us tonight. If you joined uh, and you want to uh, talk with Greg Boyer, so do we. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but but you know it could also be a time a time zone thing that's normally i think that's happened once where uh it's a little bit of a confusion with the time zone i don't know which time zone that he's in um but we wanted to make sure you know there's also time zone issues as well uh so we want to make sure that he uh has an opportunity so he, he might join like at the nine o'clock hour thinking that you know it's a certain time off or whatever so we're giving him a little bit of leeway right now so that he can kind of you know because we got a lot of stuff to ask i mean it's going to be so much yeah. fun. uh i mean the amount of time that he spent uh working with parliament funkadelic uh, not only parliament funkadelic but also maceo and then also working with prince and there's going to be there's got to be stories there all kinds of stories for sure uh, i definitely have tons of um in, interesting george clinton-esque stories uh that i've heard that i i was curious if he ever saw anything that was you know crazy from the stage i'm sure he's probably seen some pretty insane stuff from the stage uh yeah. but he was in there what, what's 19 what when did his parliament funkadelic stuff start uh for greg yes yeah, I think Greg joined in uh, 1978. Yeah, so he's definitely saw all kinds of crazy stuff for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, there's so many stories that surround George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic and, and everything that they went through. And, um, you know, there was all the, obviously, the stories of, you know, there's a lot of negative stories. But, I mean, he, even the, the many times that I've seen George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic, you think you and I have seen him twice and i've seen him at least five or six times beyond that um and i've, I've seen, seen the t-funk all-stars a couple of times but not the it's yeah. kind of the same thing but yeah not the yeah the well -funk. yeah and i've i've seen some crazy crazy stories just some amazing just crazy crazy stories that that happened um i just i mean i think it was a time in Athens where George Clinton uh, was asking the crowd if anybody had a joint. <laughs> and somebody in the audience, in the front row, surprise, surprise, had a joint. And no. uh, yeah, I, it, it was right there. I saw it and uh, handed it to him. And it was a, it was new. And he had a, uh, and I was there as press covering <clears throat> George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic, but also the opening act, Yo Mama's Big Fat Booty Band. Ooh. Uh, and they had, um, and I saw Prince grab this. I mean, Prince, I saw not Prince, not Prince. Let's be clear. Uh, I saw George Clinton grab this joint and I was like, I need to get in. And he was looking for a lighter. And I said, I need to get in a place where I can get a picture of this as quickly as I possibly can. So I immediately ran over to the side where only I had access and got a side view of George um 
he had the joint in his hands and he was cupping it and he had the lighter and he was he lit the joint and I got like three shots pop 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 right there of him firing a joint from the stage and I was just like yes <laughs> so I was like this is uh and I think then I did a review of the show like a day or two later and I said George Clinton smokes Athens and that was <laughs> <laughs> I the whole entire review uh, oh it was so great uh, but anyways, yeah, I've got so many George Clinton stories. I just, you know, I'm not going to tell the same ones I always tell, but, uh, there's always great ones. Um, what was the, uh, uh, Stacy says George Clinton wandering into the night of living dead movie shoot is my fave. I don't know that I know that story. I, I, no, I definitely don't know that one. Uh, I, I'm going to have to, we're going to have to look up that story. Rob, you want to look up that story and see what that's about? Just, I guess. George Clinton, Night of the Living Dead movie shoot. Uh, maybe we can find something on that. That would be a pretty interesting story. There's got to be some other. I mean, you got to understand, Greg Boyer was playing with Parliament Funkadelic from 1978 to 1996. He was with them literally almost 20 years. And I just, it, it, and through a, I mean, 78, that right there is ridiculous right in itself. It's just yeah. insane. Um. I just can't even process that um, because the seventies and the eighties were crazy for them. Uh, and it also probably means when I was trying to remember when George Clinton signed to Paisley park, um, because that probably meant that he was, could have been part of that mix as well, as far as George Clinton signing with Paisley park and being part of the whole label and, and all that. So it could have been a little bit of anything. I don't know. Hmm. It's a thought. Anyways, so uh, yeah, I just—it's just amazing to me some of the some of the great stuff that's got to be out there. And of course, as I said, after he went from Parliament Funkadelic, he went to uh, Maceo, and of course, Maceo's already got all the James Brown stories going for him. And so there's got to be some stuff that kind of bled over from that. Um, there's got to be some Maceo surely sh shared some insane stories with Greg, I'm sure. Uh, and all the stuff that you just learn from just from a stage performance and thinking about the stage performance differentiations between the artists. I mean, you go from working with George Clinton in Parliament Funkadelic, who's the whole stage show is just insanity right out of the gate. I don't think I've ever been to a Funkadelic, either, either whether it's George Clinton and Parliament of Funkadelic, if it's the P-Funk All-Stars, if it's whatever it is, whatever variant it is at the time, it's always been complete mayhem on the stage. I don't think okay. George ever had any specific type of, the, the only organization was the songs that were going to get played. That's it. That's the only organization that there was because there was always random people on the stage i think he knew oh you're here okay you can sing background uh oh you're here you can you know i, I think his musicians were up that was set uh i think his the song list was pretty much set and it's pretty much the same all the way through uh until the later years when he had his son and stuff take over and then they were um uh, stacy just shared a link on the story uh yeah, right. <laughs> if you want to type all that uh those attributes uh, I, I can't get to that i mean I, I got the gist of it but i can't get to that link uh oh it was tales from the tour bus did i i must have I, that was the, the animated it's, show yeah it's but also I'm, in his book too yeah i don't i never even started that book i i got him yeah. i got the book i he autographed the book uh for me but I, I did not read it. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it was like in the, the late 60s, or uh, I think it was late 60s. They were uh, in Pennsylvania, and they were trying to get to uh, trying to get to their next gig, and they were driving through some uh, western Pennsylvania, I think it was, and they were trying to get through, uh, get to the next gig, and, and George was like, hey, let's take this shortcut, and they ended up, <laughs> and they were all, well, I don't know all of them, but 
a lot of them were tripping on acid and they drove into, they, they drove through this tiny town and like, <laughs> there's all these zombies <laughs> wandering around everywhere. <laughs> oh my God. And they're like tripping out. <laughs> I, I, I think the, the, the one story that, um, uh, the one story that I do remember from that was the story that, um, the story that Bootsy Collins told um, where he said that they, they were tripping and they played this amazing show, this whole entire amazing show. And it was, they were killing it and um, they were having a great time and it was an amazing show. And George was up on the table dancing naked and was doing all this stuff. And it was just in the whole show was just off the rails and uh they played for like two and a half three hours or something like that which is that's a short show for them uh but they played three hours and the lights came up and there was nobody there <laughs> <laughs> they played an entire concert to an empty room and like put like did everything like the whole i mean did the whole entire thing i mean surely there had to be some people who were still in their uh were in their right mind who realized that um <laughs> Maybe they thought it was a rehearsal. Or like, oh, it's... <laughs> like the bass player, maybe he was okay. Oh, rehearsal tonight. Got to get dressed up and everything. <laughs> maybe the bass player was like, um, I guess we're just kind of just, you know, playing. They're, just, they're just really like, yeah. into this rehearsal, like hardcore. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Bootsy was. Like, usually, George is usually a little more laid back, but all right. <laughs> yeah, George, George Clinton and Bootsy were pretty much sold. This concert is. Uh, this concert is is killing it. We're killing it at the show. Uh, but yeah, he would always get on the um, he would always get on the tables and and dance when he had this. What what are they called? Jashikis? What are they called? The long. Um, I think that's a dashiki. Yeah, dashiki. I think that was it called. Yeah. And he would wear nothing underneath it, and it was always open in the side. So he was always during a certain period of time, and it was definitely in the seventies. And uh, through, he would wear a daishiki, but it was like open on the side, and he was like completely naked uh, underneath underneath it. And he said he was, you know, Bootsy was like, he was standing up on the table, just flapping it around. And um, <laughs> and there was also the story about Sly Stone, because Sly Stone, oh, yes. was, Sly Stone performed with him in, uh, I guess, was Re Once. Return of the, Mother of the, what, the Mothership Connection, not the Return. Yeah. It was the Mothership Connection. Yeah. And when he, uh, and Sly Stone was standing at the bottom of the stairs, and then George Clinton came down the stairs right next to Sly's head, and once again, he was naked underneath my cheeky. And Sly turned around, and it was right there in front of his face. And uh, Sly pulled him off to the side, and, and after the show was like, "Don't ever do that <laughs> again." It was like, "Have you not?" And I think he stopped. I think he said, "No, we're not touring with you anymore." After that, yeah, I was like, <laughs> was like, "Have you not seen the show?" Hey, what's going on? Jaden Jaden stopped in uh, to say hello and whatnot. Jaden, she, she, uh, she is just chilling. And uh, again, for those of us. Um, for those of you who are tuning in, looking for uh, Greg Voir, <laughs> so are we. Uh, he actually, we, he's, he, sh he should should be in here. We're giving him to like around the nine-ish hour, and then hopefully he'll actually be here and we'll be able to conduct the interview like we had planned. Um, if not, we'll reschedule and it will be perfectly fine. We'll figure it out. Um, but you know, there's all that. Um, one of the questions I one of the questions I wanted to ask him about was uh, whether he was there when they came up with the idea for the mothership connection because the way I understand it is that basically uh, he and Bootsy were high and driving along a road one night and uh, all of a sudden a big light from the sky came down on their car. And they saw the they saw a UFO, and afterwards, uh, that's where Boots. That's where George was like, "That's you know, that's where we're going from this point on. We're going to talk about the you know the spaceships and the mothership coming down for us and the mothership connection." And I I, I don't know from from what I've read. I don't know exactly like when that thing happened. I just wanted to know if if uh, 
if Greg was there, like, well, not in the car, but, you know, like if he was around and had George and Bootsy coming in and going, we just saw UFO and <laughs> it's going to be part of the show. <laughs> right. And I'm not sure the exact timing of the mothership connection. It wasn't the mother... Um, wasn't the mothership connection earlier in the seventies? Wasn't the mothership connection like seventy four? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. About that I thought it was the, the, the mid to late seventies. Then, um, then the mothership connection. Uh, that then he probably wouldn't have been there. But I'm sure they probably would have shared the story. Greg is probably you know there's just when you're riding on a tour bus with all yeah. of them and Funkadelic, you're going to hear some stories. I was backstage for a for oh you're right it was 1975 uh i was backstage with parliament funkadelic for all of the better part of three hours and i heard all kinds of crazy stories so i can only imagine <laughs> i can only imagine that being on a tour bus for many hours is going to uh absolutely garner some some pretty good tales <laughs> Tales from the door bus. Um, but yeah. What are you listening to? I'm trying to freaking <laughs> mute what I'm looking at. We were talking about UFOs, so I was like, I wanted to, you know, take a, you know, I don't know about anybody else. It kind of freaks me out that now the military is like, hey, guess what? UFOs are real. So, oh, yeah. I mean, kind of you know. Me I don't really understand why they've denied it so for so long. I I think that the people like okay, I'm not I'm not going to throw my wife under a bus, but she absolutely does not believe in extraterrestrials or that there's life anywhere else. And I just think that's I, and I she's a very factual what's I you know, but um, on the same note, uh, I think it's kind of insane to think that we are the only living uh that we're the only living people <laughs> in the entire universe as we know it that's just it's just not i'm not talking about galaxy i'm talking about the entire universe there's no other life anywhere else is what you're telling me that's just not i just it's not, not possible it doesn't it's, seem mathematically it's already it's already mind-boggling to me that it, 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 if I really want to just like make give myself a sleepless night, I think I start, I start thinking about the universe as we sometimes do. Like, I don't want to sleep tonight. What do I want to do? I'm just gonna lay awake all night and freak myself. This out. This is what normally happens, though. I don't have it's, any acid, so why not? Is that we are that the universe doesn't end, it just keeps on going and going and going and going, and, and you can never get to the end. And even if you could get to the end end of whatever it is that it out there. starts all over again what what's on the other side of that it's just it's, it's like it's just this insanity it's just and to think that we are the only that we are the only life forms in, in, in all of that even the things that we cannot see is just ridiculous and I I, I've seen some crazy things uh, in my lifetime that I've from a spiritual realm I've seen crazy things in my lifetime um and i just there's just no way there's just no way i mean i'm just this it's not possible that we are not only not only are we not alone in this universe it, we know for a I, I i i just know for a fact i mean i'm not a scientist or anything but i know for a fact we are not alone in this universe it's, it's just not possible it's 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 more improbable <laughs> that it's more improbable that there is not anything uh than there is it's just yeah it's well not to get too deep in the weeds but you know i mean i agree I, there's got to be other stuff out there and yeah what it's kind of life possible. it is or whatever is is one thing but um to actually whether or not we might actually ever encounter that life whether or not it might actually be um you know real or whatever i mean not real um intelligent life that has the capability to get here within the short period of time that we've been here and the short period of time that they might have been around i don't know but uh, there's certainly some crap out there that is is crazy and you know yeah it's it's just it kind of freaks me out that you know all of our lives they've been 100 
denying the existence of this. And now they're like, hey, look at our new videos. <laughs> Let's it's see the viral. I'm not, you're not surprised by the government. I know there's no way that you're surprised by the government's activity in that regard. But I mean, I think even Louis C.K. had a bit on this. He was just like, even if we we were able to meet life forms from another planet, it, it, it's not going to go well. <laughs> if, if, we have no. an opportunity, if we have an opportunity, they come to this planet, one of two things is going to happen. We're either going to kill them and do some type of research on them or something, or they're going to destroy us all. It's it's just like it, it, there's nothing good that can happen as a result of us. What is this uh, page you're trying to share? Oh, I was just showing like uh, the uh, what up here. Some of the videos that they, they that they were showing, um, you know, and I was watching these videos, and uh, I don't know, I don't know. There's like some people, um, you know, who talked about, um, you know, I've heard this conversation before with people who talk about dinosaurs and whether or not there's a god and the length, the time of the uh, universe or whatever, uh, the world or whatever. And, you know, the, one of the arguments that I've heard used is, whoo, look at that one. Uh, one of the arguments I've heard used is, well, you know, God put uh, those, put the dinosaur bones out there, uh, you know, to test our faith. And it made me kind of think, well, you know, if, 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 he's me if he's messing with us, then, you know, if you have a cat and you've ever gotten a laser pointer and, uh, you know, messed around with your cat, Yes. It kind of looks like this. I want to know where you <laughs> So in my thought, I'm like, well, maybe God's just messing with us. He's got a little laser pointer and he's like, watch this. <laughs> I was wondering where you're going with that. Okay. All right. Yeah, it kind of it, 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 with the exception of this one one particular video that you just showed where it was kind of tilting a little bit. It kind of just looked like there was a spot on the lens. It was like, so wait, clean up fit. <laughs> clean yeah. up the lens. There's like certain things that look like that, but yeah. yeah, it's um, yeah, it's always amazing to me. Um, <laughs> some of the stuff that we find out that they're hiding and and whatnot, and uh, I just there's so much stuff that they're hiding. It's just it's ridiculous. It really, really is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, all those underground bases and all that stuff that's just just a bunch of craziness. Welcome to the United States of America. Uh, all over the world. Oh yeah, no, it's all over the world. I, you know, the Russia's got some craziness going on for sure. Um, so there's that. Uh, <laughs> let's see if Frank's going to join us now. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's he's, pro he's probably going to join us, and then he was like, and then he saw that, and he's like, Man, I don't know you're what's right. happening there? I'm not going to go on that joke. If he if he traveled around with Funkadelic for as long part of it, Funkadelic for as long as he did, I think he is fine. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you, you can't. I mean, it's also got to be a certain, um, you know, it seems like everybody that was in Parliament Funkadelic, even when when I got an opportunity to kind of see some of the backstage stuff, everybody was partying. It doesn't seem like there was a whole bunch of non-partiers in that band. Everybody was there to travel, play music, have a good time. Uh, and it just continued into adulthood and beyond. You know, it's kind of like, eh, whatever. Um, so, I well, and if you talk to, I mean, you know, if you if you take that, uh, uh, what's it called? Tear the Roof Off the Sucker. I mean, if you watch that movie, you know. Apparently they got paid in drugs, so a yes. lot of the time. So, <laughs> and I, I was kind of debating, you know, if um, we got an opportunity to talk to Greg tonight. Um, that, and again, we're like eight minutes away from nine o'clock, so hopefully this is just a time period thing. This is what I'm hoping. Uh, yes. This is like a re countdown of that of of what's happening here. Um, so. Yeah, I, she, he had to see some of that because a lot of that stuff happened in the '80s. Um, yeah. a lot, I mean, it happened in the '70s too, but a lot of the stuff happened in the '80s, where they were literally claiming that George would uh, offer the for those who don't know or have not seen "Tear the Roof Off the Sucker" that George would offer them coke 
uh, during the show, uh, after the show, before the show. And then when it came time for them to get paid, George was like, I already paid you. And they're like, no, you didn't pay me. He was like, that Coke isn't free. And he did that a lot, um, apparently. And there's never been any denial that that kind of stuff didn't happen. But no. um, I, I think it probably did. And I guess the people didn't know better. Um, but you was, you, I, I think that happens to you once and you're okay. And the next time he comes up, he's like, hey, you want some Coke? And be like, no, I want to get paid this time. Um, so, yeah, I, I know that there was a lot of, and, and I wonder if Greg ever saw anything like that. But, you know, I, I always try to steer clear of some of the rumor mills and, and whatnot. But there's probably a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, you know. Uh, Andre says, did you hear uh, a day of two weeks ago that fa Facebook, it wasn't two weeks ago. Um, it was today. It was the fourth, actually. Was oh, no, it was yesterday, right. Right, it was sorry. yesterday. Yeah, Facebook went down for a few hours and or a couple hours. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. I guess I wasn't online during that period of time. And I don't use Instagram. And I don't use WhatsApp. I don't use either, either one of those. So, um, yeah. It's yeah, I don't. I don't. I didn't notice it either. But uh, it is interesting that it happened a day after that sixty minutes interview with the whistleblower. Um. Seems like somebody took uh, <laughs> took some things to heart and said, "Hey, I, th I think some hackers out there and said, hey, that's BS.'" <laughs> All right, let's see. The last time that Rob did a post was uh, July sixth, <laughs> and he posted a picture of of me and him in Henderson, uh, Minnesota, and. Uh, and then he posted on August 30th, full disclosure, I don't use Facebook much. If I don't respond, it's not personal. Social media is hard. And that's all that he's posted. <laughs> so if, if you're wondering if there's any surprise whatsoever that Rob is not on Facebook, <laughs> Rob didn't notice that two-hour window that Facebook was down. Uh, that was oh, I definitely did not. <laughs> 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 because I just I, I when I got on I got on Facebook at the worst time in the world the whole freaking planet was well not the whole planet but everybody I knew was like Rob you got to get on Facebook you got to get on Facebook you're gonna keep up with everybody blah 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 everybody's having a great time and I got on like uh, 2000 the middle of 2015 or something like that or whatever. And that's when, you know, everybody started like posting all kinds of political stuff. And there was all kinds of crazy crap out there about people <laughs> eating babies and pizza joints, putting babies on their pizza and just insanity. You know, you know listen, I have been well, on you know pizza for many, many, I have been on Facebook for many, many years. I didn't see any of that. I have well, maybe it's because I live in Arizona. I don't know. But I like to do it. It, that's not location. That's that's who you're connected with. I don't know what's going on there. You know what was so disturbing to me is my drum instructor, who I love, man. He's he's awesome, and like he was one of the ones posting this stuff, and it. I didn't have anything to say. I'm like, this is nuts. And then one somebody posted something crazy to um, basically I call him my nephew because is. Uh, uh, Lewis, my other friend, um, who I've known as long as you at least, and uh, his son, uh, you know, I was on his Facebook, and one of his uncles posted something nuts, and I posted something that completely just said, you know, this is this is crazy, you know, do some research on this, and like he could like completely blocked me and stuff, and I was just like, what the heck. <laughs> I'm just trying to, to to give you like another side of the story. And that's what started. That, that's what irritated me. I'm like, and that's where we are now. It's like, you know, everybody's in their little, in their little silos and nobody wants to listen to anybody else. And I mean, at the time I was going to the Cardinals games with a serious, I mean, a guy who's like totally has different ideas about the world and, 
how things work than I do. But he and I were friends. We were good friends. I mean, you know, I was like, we both knew we didn't agree on that crap. But it was like, we could go to a football game together, hang out, have some beers and have a good time. You know, our friends and our, I mean, our family all got together. It wasn't like a big deal. Now it seems like, you know, you can't, you can't just be friends with people because of some stupid crap. It's like we're being manipulated, and that's what I don't like. And that's that's part of what I think happened when that's, that's this, everything, though, Rob. That, that is true. I agree with you, but it has never gotten this. This, sure you know, has. you can watch the news. It, ma- it doesn't matter where you watch the news, whatever news organization that you're watching, you're going to get their own spin on things. You know. Yeah, but in the past, though, you still like had you know you could still have conversations without it going to the crazy places it goes now. <laughs> it, it, it just, it just uh, never got this. Crazy. Well, it was not. This now, crazy. There is, there's crazy craziness is out there for sure. Now yes. I, I, I agree. There's always I been have, crazy. I have unfriended family members. Um, yes. I have family members that I have unfriended uh, just because their, um, their beliefs and especially when it comes to politics are just insane it's it's right. not it, it's like really like and i just kind of i just unfriend them this is really simple you just you can you can recognize the crazy and just unplug from it if there was but see, a, that, to me that is the problem if you should unfriend it, somebody just because they have different ideas i guess that's my well, thing it's like we didn't used to have to say you're nuts so i'm not going to be your friend anymore <laughs> it was like you're nuts but i can go bowling with you i'm not gonna go to you know well, our, our whole friendship is based on that <laughs> I, I know you and i have completely different ideas about a lot of things but we're still friends i mean that's that's what i don't get we can still talk to each other we can we can even talk about that stuff and still be friends yeah but it, but you know this the, the Facebook thing is is just always been insane, and um, but if well, there was a way for right, me- so and that's when I joined when it got even more insane, and I said, "Dude, I'm and what well, you're just reading to my me, brain." You don't get into arguments with people about anything because then yeah, uh, it's that keyboard bravery. Bravery is just insanity. It doesn't make right. Sense. You don't say the same kind of thing face to face that you do on Facebook. And I firmly believe, I really honestly believe, and and I. I I may have told this story many, many years ago, um, but there was a um, a social media account that Prince had, and it was not. Um, he was he showcased, and I can't remember what it was. He showcased a song of his that he would he had just worked on, and I think it's one that was released now. Um, oh, I, I was I think it was "Fix Your Life Up." I think is what it was, um, and it was an early version of that uh, song, and he showcased it on this channel online that he had and i was maybe it wasn't fixture life it was one of the ones where it was a screamer song because i think it was it, it preceded fixture life up which is third eye girl um but anyways he was it really sounded like his vocals were straining and as a vocalist i was like uh okay mm-hmm. um i i like the song i like the i like the I like the beat. I like the melody. I like I like what's going on, and I remember putting this in a in the chat area. It wasn't really a chat; it was like a forum type of area. And I said, uh, "I really like that song. Uh, I really like that song. I just hope he doesn't blow himself out vocally because it sounds like he's really straining to hit those notes. He's straining to hit that." Um, and uh, I like the song, but I just think it's 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 a little it it as a vocalist it's 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 tough to hear because I feel like he's really having to push, and we're probably not going to get an opportunity to hear this song live because of that. Because uh, and that was it. It was that was essentially the meat of what I said. And then somebody replied, no joke. I it was like maybe an hour or two after I posted that, and I got an alert. Somebody replied to your comment. I was like, oh, well, let's see if somebody else feels the same way. This lady did not feel the same way. She, <laughs> she said, she said, I don't know who the hell you think you are, but you're not Prince and you never will be Prince. I don't know. You should just shut your 
mouth and blah blah blah. It's like she was like going yeah. off on me. And I was being like caring individual, like, I like this song, Prince. I just please protect your voice. That's how I was promoted that that's what i was like in that forum and she just attacked like you should just shut your ugly face you should and she was just going off on me and no joke um i know that prince was watching this forum because that that forum was where he released that song so he was reading the feedback mm -hmm. he was looking at all the feedback that's where he released the song and he was looking at the forum and he this lady went off on me and 24 hours later, that forum was gone. He took everything offline. And I was yeah. just like, I'm hoping that I wasn't the cause of that because it, the timing of that was so, the timing of that was very much like, well, I would like, like he reacted. He saw that negativity that was happening yeah. amongst his fans. And he was yeah. like, I don't like this. And matter of fact, then 48 hours after he pulled the plug, then he also released a statement explaining why he pulled that off, pulled the website down, was because of the fact that he did not like seeing, he did not like all the negativity. And for the very reasons that you did not engage with Facebook when you engage with it, was because of the fact that he just did not like to see all that negativity. And I can't remember which specific side it was, but the timing of it from the release of the song, my comment, this girl's comment, then 24 hours later, everything is gone. And that was the reason why he said he pulled it. And I was just like, well, I can say that I was not part of that negativity. I was, I, I was very, it's, it's one thing to express oh, like your boy. opinion, but then to it get nuts. And it wasn't what wasn't a negative critique. It was like, man, I really like this song. I right. Can he can he pull it maybe pull it down a key? Because I'd like to hear this song live, but there's some songs that he's not gonna sing repeatedly every night right. live in concert if it's gonna hurt his vocals. Right. This happened with the fix, uh, with the song Shut It Out, which is one of my favorite songs by the fix, yeah. but it's a strainer for Cy Kernan, who's the lead singer of the fix. And uh the last two times I saw him in concert, he was like, Any request. And I was like, shut it out. He was like, mm. and he tapped his throat like, mm, that one's going to, you know. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess that's why it's not playing it. But so if I hear a song that I really, really like, I, I think about it in that context, being a vocalist, you know, think about it. How how does it hurt? Uh, how can it potentially hurt their vocals? How can it, will I be able to see this song performed live in the future? What, you know, and, and I, I was so... It was not, I know Brian was sitting here, oh, critiquing Prince. <laughs> oh my gosh, LOL. Um, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing that jumped right as I was clicking on it. Um, <laughs> so I was just like, uh, well, it was very constructive criticism. It wasn't, and it wasn't critiquing it in a negative way. It was just saying, I like the song. Um, I hope he can manage to sing it for a long period of time because it sounds like it's a rough song. Yeah, but but even having a critique is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, that's, that's I mean, making mistakes and critiquing things is how everyone grows. And it's, it's really your approach and, you know, your, how yeah. you take what comes in. And, you know, it, it, it does frustrate me sometimes that, you know, it's just saying one small thing. It's like, you know, this song or whatever, you know, I, I liked, but uh, it just didn't feel like whatever it was that I was expecting. And, um, it, you know, to have people just get in a silo and say, you know, it's either us or them for or against or whatever doesn't it doesn't bring us together. And, and that's what bothers me. It's like, you know, like I said, the, the, you know, I, I have a lot of friends who think completely different than I am because I do than because I live in Arizona and, <laughs> and <laughs> like Arizona is like so vastly different from anywhere else in America. Well, you live in a state that's similar. So, uh, you know, both well, of our no, I think Arizona and Georgia are very different states for sure. Uh, it, this is like well because you've got the whole southern, the land. southeastern uh civil war stuff georgia is the we, we weren't even a state back then <laughs> georgia is the strangest and we we we, we do have a, a guest that's waiting here but it's not greg jeff has joined us i'll i'll, I'll bring him in here yes! <laughs> uh, for those of you just joining us greg has still not joined us yet 
um, we are just kind of wasting time just talking about random stuff until he get an opportunity to join us. Uh, Jeff is here, though, but I do want to say this before I bring Jeff in because uh, I don't want to get derailed from this thought. Uh, and then he left. Jeff left. Uh, <laughs> he saw what we were talking about. He's like, oh, hell no. Uh, uh, Georgia is a extremely strange state, especially Atlanta, because we got a lot of stuff Agreed. going on here. It, 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 first off, it's the Bible Belt. Yep. And in the 70s and 80s, this is very, very much conservative Christian world for sure. Yeah. But it's also ground zero for a lot of different uh, racial issues, a lot of different uh, movements, um, just everything with that we have with the Confederate <laughs> angle, everything that happens here, this melting pot of diversity makes this state really, really weird. You can go one mile this way and have an totally different experience and go one mile that way it's it's just it's yes a that's bizarre, true bizarre bizarre state let's bring jeff in here oh this way and have the, oh, oh, we got a little bit of echo. Jeff. On, jeff. and our special guest tonight jeff page jeff <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you i know everybody was waiting for me i know you're waiting for me i finally made it <laughs> no it's it's uh so uh, for those who uh, again greg boyer has still not joined us yet um he has not I, I sent him the link. Yet I was saying, saying this online. I sent him the link yesterday, early afternoon yesterday, and he did not respond. Uh, and I was like, oh, I don't. That's not. That doesn't set well with me. And then today he had didn't respond at all today. And I was like, uh, so I was a little bit apprehensive. I was like, maybe he might show, maybe not. So hopefully he will come. Um, and of course, if he does, we absolutely will edit out all this. <laughs> <laughs> all the way up to the interview because there's been nothing worth keeping that we've discussed <laughs> wow <laughs> other, other than other than a butch story um i think there's you know there's some funny moments oh yeah they get alone and what what happens they just <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> but we also said that if he doesn't you're so butch when you're not here yeah, <laughs> Yeah, it was. It's a really funny story. I, I don't want to reshare it for those who already lived through it once, uh, but uh, it's a very, very funny story. Uh, anyways, well, I'm, I'm glad I could show up and suck the energy out of the room. <laughs> you didn't suck the energy out of the room. No, you actually added a new angle to the nothing. Yeah, that we is. We probably need that. <laughs> we need new, fresh. Uh, yeah, this is almost like another free for all. Is what this is. Um, Not really. It is. So, I, I, I am absolutely positively looking forward to uh, next week. As I, I was looking forward to tonight, uh, I'm, but uh, <laughs> Greg is obviously in a it, maybe he's in a different time zone. We thought maybe nine o'clock might roll around and he might be he might think it's a specific time, and so that probably what happened. And so, uh, eight um, half, how about I just call him up? <laughs> Dude, call him. Hey, dude, what you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, if I had his phone number, I would. All, all, all of our com all of our communication has pretty much been email and Facebook, and I've already uh, exhausted those particular um, avenues. Well, but, maybe uh, his Facebook didn't really come back up. It's too, <laughs> it's too bad. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it happens. Yeah, he actually had been having trouble actually, with his Facebook for a while. First, if I, if yeah, I remember exactly correctly, the first time this is actually the first time we've never. We had a guest that did not come, but I'm not saying that he <laughs> won't come. Uh, I just, uh, you know. yeah. So I and, and and I was making my day de my debut without glasses tonight. Wow! Oh, oh. I, wow. I couldn't wow. tease you now. <laughs> All right. I can do it. Yeah. Oh crap! Wait, I got to put some on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I I change the contact lenses so that I would not have the glare of because it seemed like every single time that I saw myself in the camera there was always a glare on the on the glasses um, yeah so yeah I could basically I basically knew what you were saying all the time because I could just read it yeah. Andre, Andre said the same thing he was just like stop moving your head we need to see what you're reading I, I do the same thing I'll, I'll pause it when I'm when I'm looking back at it and then I'll start zooming in like they do in the in the TV shows I just can't get enough zoom <laughs> but I try. And like you're in a spy movie. 
Let's see, is he looking at pictures or is he actually reading something? Yeah. Like you're Mr. Robot. Yeah. So, you know, but you could probably you could still do it if you had a really good. I mean, this is a four a four D camera or whatever, four D or four eight, whatever. 4K, wow. 4D. You can you smell it? <laughs> uh, That's why I don't do that. I'm like, no, no. It's a four. It is a 4K. Camera. I need a little fuzziness. I look better. <laughs> you are a little fuzzy. <laughs> so did your so did your uh, kitchen get jacked? Yeah, yeah I got I got jack I got I got jackhammered. <laughs> so, nice. Congratulations. How was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See. <laughs> It was good. It was my first depth charge. I was. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is, is this the wrong room? Am I in the wrong? <laughs> Could be. Oh, yeah, this was grinder. Swipe, 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 swipe. The organ grinder. It was. Uh, it was loud. <laughs> it, it was. It was really loud. Yes, jackhammers were loud. So that's why Jeff wasn't with us at the beginning. Uh, not that he missed anything, but. Uh, he had a plumbing issue in his kitchen, and they had to jackhammer his kitchen. Uh, and they jack up. Did, did they replace the plumbing? Everything's fixed now, and yeah, everything's good. He's. Uh, we have to leave it for a few days and test it. And I, I has water now. I, I has water. <laughs> so water good. Um, but but then we're gonna come back. What's that? But do you have hot water? Do you gotta make sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have hot water. Uh, well. I took a cold <laughs> shower because I was excited about trying to get back to the show. <laughs> um, and now you're like, damn, I wasted that. Now I'm like, man, I could have. I could have just had a hot shower. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's all good. I'm, I'm back. They're going to come back in a couple of days to cement because got, he's got to drop some more cement back in on the floor to at least get it started. So I have a foundation again. Well, it's always uh, good. Worst case scenario on this uh, on this Greg Boyer issue, we'll we'll go for a little bit longer, obviously. Um, and if we have to reschedule and do a show offline, then we'll do a show offline. Um, and we'll just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do. I wanted to do it live where fans were able to to actually, you know, be able to ask questions in the chat room and be able to hang with him, and um, you know. But you know things happen. But it, Rob, you, you brought a good point. You know, um, I don't feel like I, I don't feel like I'm being ghosted. I think there was either a misunderstanding or, hopefully, as you mentioned, I hope he's okay. There's nothing wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. That's what we always want to make yeah. sure that, that nothing's, nothing's and, and, happening. And, yeah, and, and and Greg, if you're just sitting back saying, "Let me check out these guys. What is this all about?" We understand, <laughs> man. We blew we, it. We did. <laughs> We love you, man. If that's what's happening, uh, I think we start. We, <laughs> we absolutely blew it. If that's what's happening, it's like like he uh, won't be on the show and admit it. Yeah. No, I've, I've seen enough of his interviews. I, I think I think he'd be fine with this. He, yeah. He's he's pretty laid back. I mean, he's yeah. he's a smart, um, well spoken. Uh, oh, <laughs> really? wait, now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> He's a smart, well-spoken young lad. <laughs> he's got his act together. <laughs> Someday he's going to be somebody. Uh, yeah, we did not uh, We did not have a backup plan. So I, I thought I was. I, didn't you tell me to come You're in the backup plan. in case? When, yes, Jeff, wasn't yeah, I the backup plan? Just in case. I was, I was so, Jeff, to worst, tell us a bit about yourself. If, yeah. the night, if the night goes poorly after you get jacked, uh, whoa, what? <laughs> after you get jacked, come in, tell us how it was. Uh, yeah, and we'll, and we'll just run with that. We'll we'll get on the rabbit hole to speak. Exactly. No Let's talk about it. Let's talk about my water issues. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how jacked you are. Oh yeah. man, man, I'm so jacked, man, so jacked. <laughs> <laughs> she. Uh, we were actually doing. Um, uh, anyways, what was I gonna say? Oh, one somebody of the keeps asking if if Greg is related to Bonnie, and I don't think so, right? No. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. No. That's um, a good question. If we ever get him on. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure that he's not. Yeah, I'm almost I'm almost like I'm like ninety percent sure, but. 
Yeah, I think I would have known that or, or, or filed that away somewhere in my. Um, I think Prince ever had any brothers and sisters, brother and sister combo or some type of relatives um, besides the loose, loosely used cousin term uh, play in any very man. I know with Wendy and Lisa, he had obviously he had a couple. Uh, um, but I can't think of anybody that was in a band that were brothers and sisters or like direct cousins, actual cousins, not like like I signed up for this uh, for this. Wait, wasn't Chaz like his cousin? But that was like before he like. Yeah, that was before they before they actually yeah. broke out. But um, um, yeah, because it's. Yeah, know. that's that's one of those things that I, I, of all the things to look up and research and hear about, I never pay attention to who's related to who, which I probably should. But I well, one of the questions I wanted to ask Greg was there was that band uh, Juicy from the 80s, mm -hmm. and that was a brother and sister band. And I think he worked with them um, on one of their albums, like, like a really good album, too. Uh, they're, they're, they're like self-titled albums. There was something that you put in here that I was I was gonna try to work around because I never I wasn't sure if I was gonna get an opportunity to. You had a bullet in here, Rob, that said multi instrumentalist has quote unquote broken code on approximately one hundred, and then that was the end of the thing. One hundred instruments. He's broken code on hundred instruments. That's that's how he refers to it. He's he's like he basically uh, he's he got interested in musical instruments like when he was two or three. And um, and uh, he would basically take the instruments and in some cases take them apart. And uh, so he would like take instruments. Th this is this is this is what I remember from the research I've done. He would take instrument. He was in band in high school and obviously sooner earlier than that. And he would take instruments from the from the band room, take them home, figure out how they worked, how they made the tones. And he has perfect pitch. So. You know, it was a lot easier for him than for some of us who perfect pitch is like, you know, a God thing that we'll never have. Um, and uh, so he would figure out how not just, you know, how to make the tones and then how to play them, but like how they made the tones. And this was this is my understanding of the way he's described it in the stuff I've seen. So when he says broken code, he's, he's, he's basically like saying, you know, I just figured out how it worked. I figured out how the instrument made the sound. And so once he did that, he could play basically anything. So um, that's that's the way that 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 he described it. And I did want to kind of like delve into that because I'm I'm like that's an interesting way to think about it or interesting way to approach it. And um, I've heard other musicians talk to him about that, and a lot of them, you know, also had the same thing. It's like that's just unique, and a lot of them didn't. Some of them have like been like, oh yeah, like I get that now. Now that I'm, you know, now that I've been playing for thirty years. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of people here that that are fitting in on my, uh, on the question that we asked about whether or not Prince had any people in his bands that were, you know, uh, not just couples, but I mean, were actual brother, sister, cousin, whatever. I know Stacy says Roy okay. and Brenda Bennett. Roy and Brenda Bennett were husband and wife, though. Brenda Bennett was the singer for um, Apollonia Six and Vanity Six, um, the blonde, and then, um, but Roy was her husband. Roy okay. was actually a Brenda. Player. Okay, right. Okay. Roy was uh, well, he was a lighting director or a stage director, um, and he was also the, the the center of the big lemon cake fiasco with uh, Sheila E as well. Uh, the whole thing about uh, Sheila E going, I used to make him lemon cake all the time. I hey. love Sheila E. And all that, but apparently, Roy. I didn't think the twins. I didn't think the dancers were actually true twins. I thought they were two uh, separate. Uh, yeah, I don't. That's a good question. I think that they, I think they actually are. Maybe Marcia may be right on that one. And Josh mm -hmm. and Hannah again. That's husband and wife. Technically, technically, they that was again. We're not talking about just husband. Husband and wife is is, is one thing. Uh, but that would be a husband and wife thing where both of them did play in the band because Hannah played drums and there were a few shows, uh, quite a few shows where Josh came and um, uh, came and played percussion. Most oh, yeah. Of them. They played. Uh, Maya and Andy McLean. OK, yep, that's right. Yes. My, yeah, Maya and Andy. They're, they're, yeah, there's this one there. So that's what, there you go. Um, 
Yeah, and, and, and yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wendy's brother worked on a road one of the day. Yeah, matter what? of fact, um, yeah, David. That's what I was thinking of. David Coleman. Yeah, David was at. Um, he was the one. Well, he yeah, he played a lot of the instruments on uh, some of the instruments on the album. Some of like the oud and all the weird, a lot of instruments. Matter of fact, he was brought. With the exception of you always hear these these stories. Uh, I can't remember who was telling the story. I think it was uh, Dr. Fink when he was on the show. When he was talking about um, how he had played Prince some stuff, uh, early Beatles, you know, some of the Beatles stuff during their trippy period, you know, Sgt. Peppers and, and uh, Revolver and stuff like that. And Prince really started to like that atmospheric, ethereal sound and stuff. And David uh, was really good at playing all types of instruments from different countries, all types of you know Indian instruments and and whatnot, and was really really good at doing all those and really kind of helped to flesh a lot of that stuff out. Um, what were you pointing at, Rob? <laughs> um, my face was working. Uh, somebody was talking about somebody was talking about David and Bobby Z. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, all, all you see is Rob. You win. You're just like <laughs> I see you, baby. What's up? That's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, I see you. I see you. Oh <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> this is the reason why Rob didn't get along with Facebook, uh, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> nobody ever got my my messages back when I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I don't know why. I didn't tell you Bobby Z and David Z. There you go. Yeah, it was Jill, Bobby, Bobby and David. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of trip them. Yes. I think uh, David was like a technically correct. Or something. Technically correct. Claire Fisher and his son, Brent. Uh Brett, who's been on the show before. We had an interview. I did an interview with Brett. Uh actually did it at the celebration. Actually got an opportunity to sit down with him and we went to a hotel. Um, we had actually I took Brent don't, Fisher. Don't start, Jill. I took I went to the celebration, <laughs> took Brent I Fisher to uh Hulahans. that's the name of the place and i took him out to dinner we sat and chilled and had dinner and then we went to the hotel and found this meeting room that was empty and we were having a doing interview there and then this guy came in this cleaning guy came in and just started we're doing this interview you can see i'm in an interview i've got the mic i've got everything and everything and a guy comes in and gets the vacuum cleaner looks at us because me <laughs> we're like, what the hell, dude? Uh, and we, we we tried to wait it out, but it was like this dude was like getting the corners and moving chairs. And we're like, all right, is there another room that we can go to? That we can he was interview? staying on purpose. So we, yeah, so we went to another room, a couple of rooms down, and uh, had a. And so we, there's a really great interview with myself and Brent Fisher that's really on there. But he talks a lot about his dad. Talks about his dad never. Ooh. All the arrangements that uh, Claire Fisher had done for Prince and Prince and Claire, it, like all the horn, all the string arrangements and stuff that you hear on stuff going back around the world a day and parade and all of the string arrangements, all of them, pretty much all of them. I think Novi Novog uh, did some, but a mass majority of the string stuff you hear comes from Claire Fisher. But, um, Claire and Prince never met in person. That's the weirdest part of the story is that Prince sent the album to him and Claire did the string arrangements and laid the string arrangements on top of the music and then sent it back to Prince. And then Prince got the, uh, he got it and it was perfect. It was exactly what he had envisioned. It was exactly what he was hearing in his head. And he didn't need to make any adjustments. He didn't say change this. He was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then he got this weird thing that was going on in his head. It was like, you know, I am afraid that if I meet Claire, it's going to screw up this relationship. And he was so terrified that if he ever met Claire, that he was going to end up influencing the way that Claire wrote for him, that he just refused to meet Claire. And the only time that he ever got to meet, uh, that, that they almost met, was uh, at a award show. And Prince was standing on side stage about to accept an award and Brent walked his father up the ramp because at that point, um, Claire was 
um, he, he was in, in very ill health and he walked him up the ramp to the side of the stage behind Prince, not too far behind, like, like literally only about less than 10 feet away from Prince. Uh, and Prince never turned around and Claire was standing right behind him. And Steve Park happened to be there and he took a picture of from an angle with Prince and Claire in the same picture. But even then, they still never met each other, which is it, it is just the insane insanity of that whole entire story between Prince and Claire Fisher. It's such an, uh, such a weird story. And again, it's in that interview. Brent tells it so 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 wonderfully, you know, kind of going through all the details about what his father was going through. And when once Claire passed away, Brent picked up everything and really just ran with all the string arrangements and really made um just continued on that in that legacy. And especially when you think about all the albums made in the 2000s that Brent has had his hand in as far as the string arrangements and stuff, it it just sounds he was able to to I mean figure to figuratively pick up the baton in place of his father and just and take it over. It was really, really cool. You know, there's something to be said about being in whatever type of relationship, business or personal or project or whatever it is, having a specific set boundary, a set scenario, or and knowing your your place in that relationship and what it takes to maintain it no matter what. There's something to be said that said by that because people is, as a whole become desensitized and and always tend to want more of something so two people never meet the relationship works perfect they both know that this is the right way but somebody somewhere along the way goes well you know the temptation or whatever it is so there's something very powerful in that being that close to almost breaking just like you said they're in the same room or she's right behind him and still it didn't happen. That's as intentional as you can get, you know, because there's never a, a time where Prince didn't know who was around him. So it's not like he didn't know. It's just not possible that he could not have known that, you know what I'm saying? So that's pretty powerful of just that whole scenario yeah, to me. Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, there, he always had some really, uh, strange, unusual relationships with pretty much every musician that Prince ever worked with. There was always some weird dynamic that was going on with, and and that may that really would be a really good topic for discussion one time is his relationship, just the the one on one relationship, just with the stories. You know, the weird relationship that he had with Wendy and Lisa. You know about how how much they actually gave of themselves to him and to his writing, and to the music process um for, for prince but yet he was and the fact that he was promoting the gay relationship that they had as a stage show as part of the show right as part of the element but then later on in life kind of distancing himself from them because of the fact that they were gay it was like you were the one who kind of you know yeah you encouraged it what do you, you encourage it i mean not that they didn't have a relationship before right they were put on stage but it was still was like they had this thing where now they could work professionally together and have a relationship and be in this really, really cool environment of creativity that was being groomed by Prince. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he just like switched gears on him. And if you look at, and you look at the relationship he had with Brown Mark and how it was every single person he had a really unique twisted relationship with in some form or fashion with everybody that he's ever worked with, especially in the revolution and in the early parts of uh, MPG. I think in MPG and with the nineties version of MPG, he started to really kind of distance himself uh, really from, he didn't want to get really, really too close to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some people and the people that he was close to like Wally Safford, um, it, they actually were kind of shakeouts from the whole shenanigans in that transition between Revolution and NPG. Because mm -hmm. if you remember, in between Revolution and between what, what is known as New Power Generation, what there were some shakeouts that were in there. Sheila E. was in that shakeout. Right. She took over as drummer for Bobby Z. Uh, what, he brought in the, the Game Boys, which were essentially 
you know, the dancers from Purple Rain that were up on the balcony, which mm-hmm. is Tony M and Damon D. Do my dance. Uh, yeah. And, and so, and they ended up being part of that shakeout. Then they ended up having that uh, theatrical part of Sound of the Times where, you know, there's a bartender and they're talking about, damn, yeah. look over there. You know, so, but they were shakeouts from that. And so he was kind of close to those individuals and Jerome Benton, which I just saw Ann Ng just. Yeah, wrote, Terry wrote, Lewis and yeah. Jerome. Jerome Benton and Terry Lewis, and Terry. not a lot of people know that. That's right. But yeah, so that is true. That There's one right there. Yeah. Um, I, I could imagine right. the, the difficulty, the dynamic between all of those people because, and especially with how much Prince was able to ch- change himself. Like, he always changed something, and it was a dramatic, it was a big change. And so you have to think, when someone changes their appearance, they're also changing parts of their personality. They're changing their way of thinking. And people are allowed to do that. I mean, you can do, you know, you something hits you, then you go with it. And so, but if you're the person that subscribes to something, if, if you've sold me on something that I commit and give every bit of my soul to what I believe that you're, you're telling me and what we're doing, and then you change, but I gave myself to the original concept it's really hard to continue moving. It takes, you know, that's a just, wow. Like all of that, just, man. Yeah. I, I think to me, it's interesting because to me, it always seemed like it was a trust issue. Oh yeah. And, yeah, and you know, I, I think that when, when he, I, I think, I don't know. I, I, I think that it was, it was, he wanted the acceptance of people to trust him when he made those changes. But when other people, maybe changed a little bit that it made him uncomfortable and um, because it, it just seems unusual to me that so many people that he brought into his uh, brought into his music which to me how I feel about Prince is if he brought them in if he brought those people into his music he's basically bringing them into his heart he's bring, he's bringing them in as close as anybody as anything Right, and I think there's something about um, you know probably probably his childhood. I'm not sure. I mean, I know there's you know there's been some things written about his childhood about it being difficult, and and maybe that maybe that was it. It was that that you know that trust that ability to trust people um, was just yeah. broken when he was young. Or or it it doesn't have to be that. I mean, how many people do you know are complete control freaks in what they're doing. And and when I say control freak, I know that that has a negative connotation, but there are people that need to control everything around them in order to function in their in their job. Sometimes it's a requirement. So right. um, this is his business. This is his life. And, and it's so, I mean, so nobody could see things the way he saw them. I, I, I just name a super any superstar that wasn't yeah very guarded and very in control of everything if you change and you start acting funny you got to go right. but i'm going to do what i need to do because this is my world and you're a part of my world <laughs> you know so it, it's a ugh, it's a tough one it's a tough one I, I guess for me the reason i say that it, that i that i feel it's a trust issue is because this was not just something with his musical partners and friends this was something right. that repeated itself seemingly in all of his relationships yeah yeah i would agree with that i, would. I, I know i know the feeling yeah 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 trust the family issue. yeah <laughs> that's true yeah. that's true but i mean you can't really diagnose somebody from <laughs> I mean, thousands of miles away or beyond the grave so <laughs> i can count on one hand um well, probably two hands now more so, but really how many people I really consider close to me. There's a whole lot of people that I know, a lot of people that I do things with, and we, we have a great time and have no issues with, but it's just a really small number that are close, close, like in my circle. Yeah. And my, my circle is small. You know, In fact, I yeah. barely fit in it. Yeah. <laughs> the circle feel it you know so <laughs> i get that and i used to even have conversations with people and tell them like you know i they'd say oh your friend such and such and i'm like uh, that's not a friend that's an associate 
and it would offend people. And I had to right. reword it because I just don't use that word loosely. Right. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I get it. Chris and I, Chris and I actually ran into that a few times, um, in our friendship over the years. And, uh, um, he's probably one of the few people that I completely trust now, but there were periods when no, <laughs> Well, the, the people I have closest to me are the ones that never see me, but when we do, we're cool. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm they don't have that. to see me every day. Right. You know, yeah. the people that have to see me every day and can't, you know, like, yo, I haven't talked to you in a week, man. You, what's up? Are we still cool? I'm like, no, <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> do you right, still, like, why are you taking this personal, man? I got shit going on. <laughs> Come on, man. I got a life, man. Someone texted me one, during one of our shows a um, couple, couple weeks back, I guess it was, and I, I couldn't really respond, but I was like, I'm, I'm busy. I, was, I, I don't remember what it was. And they got mad that I didn't talk to them. They got bothered. And I was just like, look, <laughs> it's time to cut you off. <laughs> I, just, I just can't play that way. I'm not good at it. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. try to be, but mm. right. But at the same time, uh, if, if somebody allows me in their world, I'm, I'm going to give them, you know, 100% if, if I've processed it and I want to be a part of their world, because sometimes I don't even want to be a part of it. But if I do, you know, I'm going, I'm, a, I'm 100, I'm one, I'm in. But at the same time, I'm still going to keep, I'm not going to be all over you. I'm not going to be, you know, I don't have like separation anxiety, except when Chris tells me come in late for the meeting, for the, for the show, just in case <laughs> I was hurting. Make up a story about your 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 kitchen, you know. <laughs> no. A little hurt, a little, a little hurt. Oh, we got jacked. Yeah, we got jacked. I, I we need a Greg Boyer stand-in. Can you do it? <laughs> Cut your hair. Get in here. Well, I found I found a uh, I found an alternate. I mean, this I've been having discussions with uh, uh, Greg Boyer. Uh, online here and i actually the, what, the whole time you guys were talking not the whole time but i because i've been listening uh I, i'm looking at this there's a greg boyer and there's a greg boyer dash trombone trombone both of them have uh photos but you know one of one looks like a personal account one looks like a business account and i'm trying to figure out if i can possibly reach him through the other one uh as well and um so we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's like the same. It's just, just, just as long as you don't grab the one that says Greg Boyer skin flute. That's not him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, Michael. <laughs> we were talking about you know people, people, people changing. We were talking about now. We're not going to talk about skin flutes. I'm not even entertaining this. This. Uh, kind of you know, there's thing. another Greg Boyer musician that's out there who's a singer. And when I was doing my research on this, I like pulled it up and listened to the album. And at first I thought, well, maybe this really is Greg Boyer trombonist because he has a really deep voice. But I don't know. I, I listened to the album and I was like, I'm not feeling a Greg Boyer trombonist vibe here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, now the one account that I'm, I'm looking here is facebook.com slash Greg Boyer 58 which would be right year-wise. Um, right. First and it says husband, father, and oh, yeah, trombonist and arranger. And if you go into his photos, uh, there's a lot of different things. But um, <laughs> and there is another account that he also has uh, that is. I love this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, keep going. While you're doing this, uh, everybody here, let's all just start. Stop him. Greg Boyer. Wait. And this, 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 Social this, media. Start reaching out to any Greg Boyer you can find. No, no, no. This, this is another one here. We'll get a Greg Boyer. <laughs> Greg Boyer dash. He doesn't have to be the Greg Boyer. Shut the fuck up for a second. I it can. says Greg Boyer trombone. Trombonist <laughs> arranger. Resume includes Prince, Parliament, Funkadelic, uh, P Funk All Stars, comma, Chuck Bro. And of course, he's. he's yep. even, posted and that's another one so he's got two accounts here yeah but don't use that one that's a misdirect that's, <laughs> that's i'm telling you man <laughs> how was that a misdirect i don't know <laughs> Just yeah. so, so anyways uh yeah so i don't know I, it's it's kind of sucks 
So I don't know. <clears throat> so we'll figure it out again. We'll, it is what it is. It's uh, maybe he's in the Caribbean and he's going to show up in the next, I don't know, 10 minutes. Uh, maybe he'll show up in 17 minutes. If, if, if at 10 5, he hasn't done there, we're done. We're done for the night. <laughs> if he shows up at 10 o'clock, we'll, we'll do an hour show and uh, try to do, make his best, uh, make it as best as possible that we can possibly. Uh, anyways. Um, yeah. You were talking about how people change. Yeah. I, I Rob, as Rob was telling you, um, <laughs> I was, I, I was a totally different person. Uh <laughs> I was a totally different person 35 years ago. Um, totally different. I, I was, we, I kind of told stories. Your actions were different. But my, I, my actions were different. I was, uh, I, I would, de I was in survival mode. Um, yeah. I was definitely in survival mode. Yeah. And it was kind of in a, a scenario where I did whatever I needed to do to keep my head above water. Uh, whatever that meant, whether that meant fucking over friends, whether that meant, whatever that meant and, and as shitty as that sounds uh that was that was um that that's the reality of it and i just i i you know i tried to i finally got to a point where i think my brain finally i i was able to I, I I got my I got the means in order that I didn't have to do that anymore. So I was able to get into a career that was able to provide and give me stability in my life, and I didn't have to. I could get out of that mode. But also, there's a there's a maturity aspect of it too, right? So I think it was a combination of those two things. It was a combination of okay, now I have I I, I'm, I, I have a job that I'm able to uh, keep keep. A roof over my head, uh, provide for my family, uh, you know, do, and 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 I still can do what I love to do, uh, you know, here and still have musical aspirations yeah. and, and, and all that stuff. But I don't, you know, I, I don't have to get into that mode where I feel like I've I've just got to do whatever is necessary to to survive. And I just it's um, uh, he's here. He is, he is here. I see him. Hold on a second. I don't. I don't know where he's texting. Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, we have a boyer. Greg, check your. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see. If, we'll see if it's the right Greg. Uh, Greg, check your your Facebook Messenger uh, for the links. I've I think I've sent links to both of them. And um, let's see here. I will copy this link here and I will put it in the other <laughs> your hopefully it's not the the random is it the same link you send to me? Yes. So I just said I I, I, but I don't want to, I, I don't want to put it I don't want to yeah, put, don't it, put it No, 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 I know I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know you want to do it privately. The same I guy the same guy was like no, I'm not going to I'm not going to share the top I'm not going to share my screen. I'm not going to share the top 20 songs. Give me a little bit of credit. And then I share the screen, and it's the top twenty songs. <laughs> I'm close to being a senior, so come on, man. <laughs> we all, you know, I'm starting to see more and more of these freaking commercials, um, like the ones with the butt talking. No, oh my God, Jeff and I were just talking about that. That was the, the what was the point? Of, <laughs> why I can't believe commercial? you haven't seen it more. So, so. I, all I had to do was see it that once. I wasn't disturbed by it. I wasn't intrigued by it. Uh, no. I wasn't. I wasn't haunted by it, and I, I certainly wasn't violated by it. <laughs> and I had no I desire to see I it again. I wasn't any of those things. I certainly was not violated by it. <laughs> well, you're you're more well balanced than I am. Well, I didn't started, have any flashbacks. You started up. Literally, I asked you. I had it was me, Jeff, you, Tony Mos, Tony M, Levi, Levi Caesar Jr., and I ask you online with all these people. I said, "How are you feeling?" I'm feeling a little bit violent. I'm a little violated. <laughs> that's that's how you started, man. Uh, I love the looks on everybody's face too because they were just like. I can what? private chat, Greg. Um, 
Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's what I was gonna do. I wasn't gonna like. I don't, I don't, know, out I, I don't know how to private chat in this particular. Oh, you know, well, I can. Um, I don't know how to. Uh, Greg, you know, if you, Greg, if you check your your Facebook messengers on your Facebook account, I sent both those links there. I'm trying to figure out any other way that we can actually do this that so I can get you. And, and you know uh, what? I'm I'm not afraid to put my phone number in here. And Greg, you can text me, and then I will send it to you. <laughs> we we got to figure yeah, something. Yeah, out. yeah, we can do that too. I mean, <laughs> and if it's uh, not him, I'll cut him. You know what I'm saying? I'll cut him. You know, it's him. <laughs> um. Da, 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 da. So we'll just we'll just we'll, we'll we'll hang tight. Obviously, Greg is is in the mix, and so Sweet. Sweet. uh yes. Yeah, so this has been free show, <laughs> right, Cammy? This has been an all, almost two hour free show. Uh, for Greg, uh, Greg says send him a number. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can do it from the. Um, actually, Greg, just just email. Email me at funkatopia at gmail.com. So that way we don't have don't don't share your number. Uh, email me at funkatopia at gmail.com. I will watch this. Um, I will watch this and I will send send the link directly to you in the email here. Uh, just shoot me an email and then I will respond to that email uh, with the link. Just that way we don't have to divulge your phone number, your email addresses, our email addresses, and whatever else. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Greg Boyer is in the mix. We're uh, arranging, trying to get on. Uh, he's going to email me here real quick, and I'll send him the link. And uh, P Funk says seven 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 ninety three eleven, and then we will uh, do this interview <laughs> with uh, Greg Boya. And uh, I call it WTF. I do like that P Funk. That's great. That's uh, actually Des Dickerson's phone number, but uh, used to be, anyways. Uh, yeah. Awesomeness. Yeah, Elena says, yeah, don't. That's a reason. Uh, too many crazies on the internet. Don't share your number. Uh, so Greg, just send me an email. Um, I promise I will not spam you to death or anything like that. I'll just send you this link and, uh, be in the conversation. No, that's, that's all there's going to be. Just, just shoot me an email just for a random thing. You can send it from your grandmother's account. It's perfectly fine. I'll send it to you and then we'll get Greg on and we'll do this interview. And look, Jeff, you're actually here to be able to be here for the, uh, right. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Sorry. I am so excited to be here now. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Jeff's here. Greg's here. It's all good. Yep. So it's you know, um, there's so much stuff. What's the um, Martin? Oh, Martin. Martin Kember's in the house. What's going on? Oh man, I didn't. I didn't have my. Um, I didn't have. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, you're here. You can actually do it. That's, I mean, That's I tried to do it once when you weren't here, and yeah. it didn't come out right. Yes. You know, Martin Kember, uh, singer for Color Me Bad. Uh, he's also worked with Elder Bars, nice. and uh, yeah, yes. So, so Martin Kember is in the house. Uh, yes, Martin. Uh, I did actually want to reach out to you. We are going to be talking, um, Martin. Is go Martin will be on the show, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, Martin will be on the show, and um, nice, you know, awesomeness. Actually, you know what, Greg? I'm just going to go ahead and just post the meeting link on here, and anybody else that tries to get on this, uh, we'll choke them out. You know, everybody else tries to get on there, we'll we'll just we'll just uh, kick you out. Yeah, yeah, and then when we go uh, national, no. <laughs> That's it, right. The link will be gone by then. <laughs> yes. So, so Greg, there is a link to join us on on th anybody else that tries to get on there. I'm just going to kick you off. And matter of fact, I, I may blackball you from the thing. So we're just oh we're yeah, get him. we're trying to make sure that we can get Greg in here. So Greg, Might there is you too. there is the link in that chat room, uh, and also <laughs> and everything else. Uh, can so, I use that? Can I? Is that link? Yes, you, you can. And then we're going to see that that big tick, 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 tick. <laughs> it's like video on top of video. Is gonna tick, 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 tick. Levels of levels of Jeff. Awesome. I've always wanted to do that. Like, like the picture within the, within the picture within the picture that goes on forever? It, yes, it, that always much does. does. That always trips me out when I see that in the movie. You know, the girl that looks in the mirror and she like looks to the right. And you move the camera and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> like my gallery. I love it. I. Oh my gosh! So, uh, oh man, that's, that's awesome, awesome. 
so we're still waiting. Yeah. So so uh, Mark, Mark, we need to get you on, man. We need to get you on. And you have, you know, we do need to show. We haven't locked anything down for the show next week. For those who you are wanting, next week we will have the uh, infamous, legendary Eric Leeds will be here with us next week. Absolutely going to be so much fun. I cannot wait to get Eric on the show. You can even do it without looking. That's impressive. I cannot. Yeah, I, I can't wait for. <laughs> I can't wait for Greg to be on the show. Uh, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Hold on a second. Let me let me look. Let me sure. Look what else was to say? Let me. Uh, hey, Martin. What does your schedule, Martin? What does your schedule look like on the nineteenth of this month? What does your schedule look like? October 19th, look at your calendar and let me know, Martin, what your uh, schedule is. And if you have an open schedule, since we don't have anything locked down in that date, we will have Martin Kimber on the show and we'll talk about uh, Color Me Bad Days. We'll talk about all the new stuff he's got coming up. And uh, Martin, tell me what if you got some availability on the 19th and we will lock you in and we'll just go ahead and just start building out our editorial calendar and we'll work from there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, all right. So on the 19th, Martin Kember will be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so there. <laughs> Handled. Uh, done. That's how the editorial calendar works. Uh, this behind the scenes moment has been brought to you by Geek. <laughs> Greg Boyer. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been feeling violated? <laughs> Do you feel like those butts are talking to you? With a bump that bothers you. <laughs> you felt... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, just... Live booking, yes. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's new technology, man. Live Street booking book. live. <laughs> jump on a stream and... Oh, I'm in. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Greg is still having an issue getting on, I guess. Uh, we've sent him the... Uh, we've sent him the links. Uh Aww. to come on the show, but he's not been on here. Um, maybe we'll invite Martin to come on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's the now, Martin. We don't want you to feel like filler or something. Hey, can you just fill in for a minute? <laughs> now we, we'll we'll book you on the nineteenth. We'll give you a little bit of time so we can ask all the right questions and yeah, so that uh, you know it doesn't look like we're scrambling for uh because I want to. We really want to dig deep. We want to. We want to dig deep like Stern. Um, for sure. <laughs> we got some stuffs to talk about. Uh, Greg says he's driving. He's twenty minutes from home. Uh, so, uh, oh, okay, it's so it's going to be a late show. <laughs> uh, so, but we we're just going to continue talking. We're having a good time doing it. So that'd be great. So next next week, Eric leads. The week after that, Martin Kember, and. Um, then again, we are still working on locking down the third Eye Girl reunion where we're going to have um, Ida and Hannah um, and Donna on the show. And we'll be talking about the third Eye Girl days and some of the other stuff uh, with them all together to something to hang out and have a good time. And uh, also wanted to do what uh, Jeff and I had talked about previously. We were talking about the WTF show. Uh, WTF lyrics show where we want to talk about certain things that that were said in songs that still don't really necessarily make any sense. We're trying to figure out and hopefully we can figure them out together. Such as, uh, as I mentioned, the, the great example of soda, <laughs> soda fizzing on the lawn. Uh, although I think I'm pretty much, it, it's, it's a visual that I think I know what it means. Um, and uh, I think I do know what it means, but it, yeah, it, 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 it's a visual component. And um Anyways, we'll talk about it on that show. And also, does anybody really know? Uh. <laughs> uh, also, um, purple <laughs> banana. I mean, I don't really understand how the, the purple banana thing uh, ever really got started. I mean, it really doesn't. It just seems random. You know, it's funny. Jaden was Jaden loves the song "Let's Go Crazy," and she found. Uh, she plays this version that's on Spotify that is the shortened radio edit version of Let's Go Crazy, where it takes half of the the Dearly Beloved, it takes half of that, and it overlaps it with the second half 
of the song of of what he says. So as a dearly beloved, we are gathered the other day, and then in the background you hear the and if you ever try, everybody tries to bring it, it like like it's layered on top of each other. It was like it was like sounds awful. It was like did they really play it on the radio like that? I was trying to remember back. Wow. I guess I wouldn't have noticed, but you know we're so used to the the regular version where you hear everything that he says. Dearly beloved, we are gathered. Mm. You you hear the whole entire thing without any weirdness or whatever. But apparently there's a radio edit version that's on Spotify where it takes the two halves of the um it takes the two halves of his that just makes no sense. dialogue here and it just overlaps them on top of it and i would play it for you uh but i don't want facebook to kick us off after we've waited two hours for greg to join us and then everybody be kicked off right when greg's an opportunity to join us uh so it's just it's it's insane it's just <laughs> like it's, it's <laughs> there's certain songs that i cannot hear shortened versions of like that when we got the um uh, I think it was on this deluxe edition of 1999. Hold on. <clears throat> I wanted to grab it so I see it behind me. Um, the the version that has the CD that has all those shortened versions of songs on it, um, like the six inch, well, it's like the six inch version of, or whatever it is, the seven inch version, I'm sorry, of La 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 He He He. Who mm. world would want to hear a seven yeah. inch la 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 he? No, couldn't do it. That's that's my driving song. That's the shortest drive I'd what, ever had. That's... What is the point of of <laughs> playing? Yeah, what is the point of a seven inch version of la la la? Especially if you're gonna if you're yeah. not gonna keep the bass solo and all that stuff. And it's like right. That is like the most amazing part of the song. Uh, yeah. Know this. Um, and then you have um, what like when doves when doves cry I, that. That shortened version for it, it really for most people it's it's not evident enough but when you take out that that keyboard solo at the end it, it, it's mm -hmm. just really kind of mm -hmm. all that stuff that gets edited out of these long versions i love 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 the long version of let's go crazy the special dance mix or whatever they call oh, it oh yeah uh, uh. because <laughs> and then whenever it, it Whenever you hear the radio version, it's like, oh no. And the long version of Kiss is amazing too. There's so I mean, yes. most of those long versions are just so amazing, so incredible to listen to. So when you get an opportunity to hear them and shortened versions of Girl and shortened versions of 17 Days and shortened versions of Erotic City, all these things where there's like these really highly edited versions. And it's like if you've had the luxury of hearing the 12 inch versions of these songs, you're just like, just, I can't. Yeah. I can't listen to that. Erotic yeah. City is, is very repetitive in its long version. Right. One song that I would say did not need a long version, there's a couple of them that I can think of. Uh, America is one of them. Uh, mm. I love the song America. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. It's a great, 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 great song. But there's nothing really going on in the extended version of that song. There's, It's just like drums basically yeah nothing really adds to it there's to nothing create that yeah mountains is another one mountains is a it's it, it, it it's good but there's not really a whole bunch there that's not really that, that mm -hmm. make it, like uh, make it a keeper um so i think there are some extended versions of some songs uh girls and boys that's wow. like, uh, yeah it's like yeah it's yeah yeah uh, i i still my my like you know, "Hello" is one of my favorite songs, and I'm the same way. I can't, I can't listen to a shortened version of that. Yeah, the long no, version, yeah. The only version yeah. of that for me. Yeah. Um, "Let's Work," the long version of "Let's Work" is the only version of "Let's Work" that I like. Really, the, oh, the yeah, one, yeah. Yeah, the one that's on the album is okay, but it, the long version is the version for me. Yeah, and they have a shortened version of "DMSR" and and whatever else. But uh, yeah, for those of you just joining us, I don't know where you've been. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's not the end of the show. This is normally where we would end the show. we're about to begin the show. Thank yeah, you. This, this is normally where we where we would end the show, but yeah. uh, we are going to be. Did you see the by... response from Pfog meme? Uh, it says edits suck. It's like touching boob for the first time and not going for the home run. Uh, okay. I didn't necessarily <laughs> is that that a, a <laughs> that Just, a... is that the post you're talking about, or was it the? Uh... That is the post. <laughs> However, I wasn't necessarily expecting you to read it out. <laughs> uh, Jaden's in bed, right? Um, 
And uh, <laughs> I don't know if that gets a far. <laughs> it's hilarious, though. But wow. Blue, the long version of computer. Yeah. Computer blue. Definitely. Computer love or computer blue? <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. <laughs> uh, we Flush the toilet. Be- We're done. Yeah, there's still a bunch of, on here. I have, I've never, I've never uh, clicked. I don't know what they do. <laughs> let's let's apologize. I don't know what apologize is. I apologize for nothing. Okay, <laughs> I might be able to use that somewhere. <laughs> sure. That sounds like a Rob Rhythm line. <laughs> I was just thinking that. That sounds like exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's, that's after your vi- vi- uh, st- your statement of being uh, violated. Well, oh, okay. I thought you, I thought Stacy said America extended version. No, it's actually a door extended version. Uh, but anyways, so Greg Boyer will be joining us. Um, I, I, I it uh, he's going to be joining us here in about uh, ten minutes or so. He said he was twenty minutes away from home about ten minutes ago. Uh, so hopefully he'll go right on uh, right into it, and we'll be able. To, we're going to start the show very very late from the interview, but. At least he will not have the honor of being the first guest to not actually come on the show. So if you arrived late, you're like, just be our latest guest. You're like, oh no, (laughs) what did I miss? You've missed nothing. Can Um, we can we turn out the lights and yell surprise when he comes in? Does that that work? (laughs) No. (laughs) We can all (laughs) surprise. Let, let's all pretend like we're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> like everyone freeze and we'll look like we're memes. You know, like we're just a, an image. Yeah, just. <laughs> it, it, wasn't, it wasn't for the, the by the thing behind me blinking. The, the person <laughs> behind me blinking. But, it might actually fall for it. Just. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for those on the radio show who can't actually see what's happening. We are doing just what I did. What I said. <laughs> we are yeah. just imagine something really yeah. stupid. Just freeze for a moment, and you'll understand. <laughs> so at least you guys are still going to get a Greg Boyer interview. It's going to be happening here very, very shortly, and uh, we're going to get to the bottom of the Facebook uh, scenario too. Why he has two accounts? Because most people can't even handle one account, like Rob Rhythm. Me. Uh, so the <laughs> fact that he has two, he he's he's it's double time punishment. It's, uh, it's weirdly crazy. enough, I. I kind of have two at the moment also. Oh, that's right. You do. You, you kind of yeah. made one for your Rob rhythm. Uh, but this is yeah. not, this is not even an alter ego. This is Greg Boyer dash trombone and then Greg Boyer. Um, Maybe he wants to separate himself from all the crazies like us. Uh, I need to actually see there. if I can touch base with some, uh, some of the fine folks, some of our fine fans up in Ohio at some point, because I'm going to be going to be driving up to Ohio on Thursday up into the Columbus area in Ohio, because this Saturday, my oh, yeah. daughter- That's a long drive. It is a long drive. It's like eight, nine hours, like nine hours. Yeah. Uh, but my daughter, is, my daughter is getting married, so I'm driving. Oh. You, you didn't know that? You knew that. Megan I did is getting, not know that. Megan well, is, yeah, you told me your daughter's getting married. I guess, guess I forgot that it was coming this soon. All right. Yes, yeah, Megan right. is getting married. Yes. So she's getting married, Megan. That's crazy. That's awesome, though. 24. It is awesome, but I just, it's like. Not the 19 year old. She's not getting married yet. It's not going to happen. So, uh, but yes, it is awesome. So, we're going to drive up. We're going to uh, enjoy the wedding. Uh, but there may be some time in there where I may have some, may be able to spend some time with some Funkatopians up there. So, you know, we'll see. I don't know. And then on the way back, I think we're leaving early Sunday morning. I think we're going to stop in Tennessee on the way back and chill up in. Uh, <laughs> white people land i mean uh, yeah that's where you'll be <laughs> it's like i see white people i see white people everywhere <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh what do i do i think i'm one of them <laughs> i hope i can blend in I can blend. nobody move <laughs> hi <laughs> my name's Chad. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Chad. I'm Chad. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. You know, so Jesus. In Tennessee, is just gonna be more like, ah, I'm Chad. 
<laughs> I'm Shad. Do you know Jesus? I do. Wow. <laughs> it's not sacrilegious. It's true. It's not sacrilegious. Uh, no. It's, it's funny. Wait, isn't it's Tennessee funny. where Daniel's distillery is? No, we're up in the uh, up in Pigeon Forge area. Pigeon oh. Forge area. And it's just not... Um, it is definitely it's very it's very conservative area. I what's I think what's scary more than anything when we drive into those areas is you get once you start going into the mountains and you start seeing more and more Trump Pence stickers still everywhere and and it's still a bunch of still a bunch of Trump 2020 now there's a bunch of they literally have stores that are dedicated to selling Trump 2024 merchandise well, and like hats and bumper stickers and I'm just like I was like, "Wait, is he running again? He's running again." And he's got to pay his legal fees somehow. And and, and <laughs> apparently he's going to run again. Apparently, I just got done seeing a an interview that said, "Are you planning on running again?" He goes, "I don't, I don't want to, but I have to." It's like, "No, you don't! Oh my God, no, you don't!" Man, just um, anyways, when, it, it's really it, pigeon. I love Pigeon Forge. It's beautiful up there. There's lots of stuff to do. It's really fun. It's got a. It's it's just it's a really really cool fun place. But there's a lot of white people up there who have lost their freaking minds. You know, you know where you can uh, go where it won't matter. Just head on over to Lynchburg. I just uh, head on over to Lynchburg. That's where your Jack Daniels is. It won't matter. It. Yes, yes, that's true. Yes, it won't matter. Weirdly enough, it's in a dry county. You're smooth. Yeah, well, it's a dry county, which is weird. And I won't go there because it's called Lynchburg. So <laughs> you got two strikes from me right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I went once, but I didn't stay long. <laughs> no, I can understand. Uh, thank you. You, for didn't, all you didn't stay the evening. I You're did there not the stay the evening. Yes. <laughs> thank you for all the congratulations. When night fell, you're like, uh-uh. It's <laughs> And I stayed away from. Never mind, trees. Never mind. I just. Thank you for all the congratulations, by the way, uh, about my dog's wing. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm literally gonna be out of town driving Thursday, coming back Monday night, and then of course we have the show on Tuesday with the wonderful, legendary, Eric Leeds. Yes, I can't wait. It's gonna be so much fun. We got, I got so many questions for him, and we have not started that document yet, have we? No. 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 The folder's created. Uh, we. Is the folder. Uh, yes, I think yeah, there is a folder. So I think what we need to do is normally what, for those of you who are wondering, we actually have a Google Drive folder that actually has our notes and everything we're going to ask. And we kind of, we, we try to do our best as I possibly can of three extremely busy individuals trying to get together and, and uh, put all of our energies into, Brain uh, juice. Uh, into a document and, um, you know. If it wasn't for Rob, the show would have looked like the first two hours. <laughs> <laughs> at this rate, it may end the same way. I was going to say, at this point, we still don't know how the show is going to go. And I can talk about my flood again if you want. <laughs> right? Hey, can you take your camera into your kitchen? Let's just take a tour. Let's take a tour. Let's see oh, the whole room. Tour. We need proof that you've had your pipe burst. Yeah. Let's well. My plan is to try to reenact reenact a scene from uh, Poltergeist or something because I got a hole in the floor. You know, maybe I can just be like, "This house is clear." Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> pull stuff through it, like whoa. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was planning on having this show and and at ten o'clock tonight, and then I was going to watch the new Dave Chappelle Netflix special uh, that just came out uh, today. Ooh. And, um, I don't know. Mm. We'll get to that tonight. <laughs> well, it's good seeing you guys. <laughs> There's a Dave Chappelle show. Well, all right. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. There you go. <laughs> wow. I apologize for coming. Get back to work, you slacker. Um, that's what I heard from you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Dave has put his new uh, his new comedy special on called The Closer on Netflix that launched today, and so we will be. Um, I probably shouldn't say that because now it's like all oh, they're going to watch the numbers. Everybody drop. else is going to be like, "Oh, screw <laughs> this!" <laughs> oh, God, no, I'll just watch that. I'll just sit and watch that until Greg gets gets on. The truth is, there's nothing else going on anywhere else. 
You should be here. <laughs> Call your friends. That's it. So, anyways, um, yes, Elena says, uh, "Caroline, step into the light." <laughs> See, yeah, you got it. <laughs> you got to got to tie some a rope or something to my waist that I'm throw. <laughs> throw Everybody, my you know, I've met so many horror fans uh, that are, uh, love horror films. I, I was never really a big huge fan of horror films, but there's one that st there's one. It's not even the most popular one that's out there, but there's one that that freaked me out when I was a kid. Uh, and I always think you always see these random movies and, and they freak you out and they stick with you. And there's not like one of the bigger movies. Like most people are like nightmare on Elm street. I know. And I can't go to sleep or whatever. For me, it was Salem's lot. Salem's yeah. lot. That scene where his brother is floating outside of his window, scraping on the glass. Let me in. <laughs> oh God. Let me in. I'm like, Oh no. And he's like walking over to the window. I was like, don't let him in. And for some reason <laughs> that scene freaked me out. And, and still I cannot, even to this day, which it's it's a horrible movie, but even to this day, I can't I, I can't watch that scene. Still freaks me out. It's so yeah. <laughs> it's I, I love he's at the house and he's faster than the wolf. <laughs> I, I love <laughs> horror movies. Uh, I mean, I used to. I used to. I I just enjoy watching them because they don't make me. They don't do anything to me. Like I don't get the jump, right. the read, the freak yeah. out. No, but no, I no. love watching people do it. But I will say, Amityville Horror was the one that got mm, me. Yeah. No, that's the that's the wrong one. Now that's the shining. Amityville that's Horror. Shining. Amityville yeah. Horror was have you seen have you seen Midsummer? No. No. What about Happy it's Death a, Day? It's a it's a what? Happy Death Day. Happy okay. Death Day. It's a it's a really weird one, but it's in the all in the daytime, kind of like uh uh what's the one from the seventies? Uh Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, okay. oh okay. And and my mom took me to Texas Chainsaw Massacre when it came out. So I was like six or seven. Oh God. oh God! I have never watched that movie since because it's freaked me out. Oh, that explains a lot. Six or right? seven Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre. Now you see. I'm gonna call out. This my, is not my, natural. My, my brother. Who, uh, I think his was uh, Cujo. My hair got this color then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I was the only elementary life. school kid with white hair. Uh, <laughs> I am still trying to figure out why the the hair on my head has not gone gray yet, but I've got a bunch of gray in here. I, I still haven't figured out what what's wrong with this part of my head that gray is like not making it. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm I was just gonna say, what do you mean wrong? It's, it's wrong. wrong. <laughs> and and if you look closely, it's so weird. I, I didn't notice this until it, it, how it's just gray. I mean, brown, dark right here. And dark. I'm, I'm not gonna stare at your face like that, man. I can't. <laughs> Look, it's beautiful. <laughs> so weird. Now that is gonna be a clip to say. <laughs> that is a promo reel if I ever saw it. Especially for what Halloween. Going on. What time? Uh, two hours and twenty-seven minutes in. <laughs> two twenty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to call this? Beard. Uh... <laughs> Mister Christopher gets a facial. <laughs> <laughs> Investigative beard reports. <laughs> I have. I got grays all over, but you can't tell because I keep the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. But I never noticed. I never noticed that only parts of my beard got gray. That I, it was just weird. I never noticed that before. That it was just here that's gray. I, I just it's weird. It's, I don't understand. Chris, I, I see you as the I'm not um, complaining. I'm not complaining. It's just weird. I see you as the Grecian formula guy. You know the. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just I'm colorizing right here. I'm right here. My wife just, walk in. What are you doing? Quiet, quiet. You're going to mess me up. <laughs> Trying to get the lines just right. Just right. Yeah. It's not going to look natural. Get away. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. It's late. This this interview is going to go off the rails. I'm this telling. weird. Yeah. I don't know. You don't know. Most of you guys, if, if it's anybody in California, you're like, what's the problem? Uh, but. It's it's after ten where we are, and um, 
Jeff's been drinking, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rob, Rob's been smoking weed, and uh, not me. I'm just crystal lighting it all night. Crystal think, light. Yeah. <laughs> think, I'm oh, not drinking. Oh. I don't know what you think. Oh. Pink <laughs> lemonade. Excuse me. Hard lemonade. My. <laughs> Hard lemonade. Hard lemonade. Uh, wow. <laughs> Look into the beard. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> Here's my beard. Thumbs up to my mirror. Welcome to Funkadopia. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, how about them Cardinals? Wait a minute. <laughs> it was fun Greg, watching. You know the link again. Greg, I don't have your email. Uh, uh, email, uh, Greg. Uh, Greg, uh, go into your Facebook Messenger, and it should be in either one of your Facebook Messenger accounts, or uh, I will post the link right here again, Greg, right here. Uh, this is only for Greg. And, of course, you can't even copy this and, and misuse it uh, later because after this show, that link goes away. But, Greg, uh, Greg, there's a link right there. You can join join in. Uh, but Greg is uh, about to join. I and- just can't trust a man who don't eat bacon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Have, have you guys heard all the new commercials, the new bumpers that I uploaded to the radio station? There's some. Yeah. There's some insane. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you, don't, you, you don't ever listen anyway, so it's just. I like, listen, and I do. I, it's just. I haven't listened recently, the past couple of days. I haven't been. I haven't really listened it's, recently. Yeah, it's, been, it's been over the. Past I've been listening to some of our a bunch of insane recordings. Bumpers. More, more characters, more, um, more insanity. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So insanity here. <laughs> what? Never. Hey, uh, Donna. Oh wait, the fly. I, the fly was a good oh, one. Yeah. Oh, the fly! That was an awesome one. Yeah. Yeah, I love it when he eats. He's like, Bleh. yeah, that's how I eat. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think most disturbing. The most disturbing part of uh, <laughs> thank you, Sandra. Sa- Sandra. Matter of fact, uh, for those of you who didn't know, the vegetable oh, is available. Dinner, the yes, it is available. I, I uploaded it on. Um, uh, matter of fact, let me open it up here. Uh, so you guys can see it. This shirt is available now. Uh, let me share the screen. Uh, let me see if I can share it. It is available. It's. I don't have it uh, on a shirt, but for those of you who did not see it, uh, <laughs> this shirt is available. I love it. From the commercial, it's uh, it's that a, shirt that so a piece of broccoli riding a carrot, not a celery stick. That's from that commercial, and it is on. Uh, you can get it on a T-shirt right now, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's on Facebook. I don't. <laughs> oh man! The look on the celery's face. It's the look on the celery's face that it that does look like a menage a trois. She's right. It, it, and there's a reason why most of this shirt is green. So uh, enjoy it. But I tell you what's even more interesting to me than anything else is the one and only Greg Boyer in. Hey, am I showing up yet? Uh, yes <laughs> you are you are there yes Man. uh so what did, did i did i mess up did i did i like send it to the wrong account or something what did i do wrong no i just uh haven't had facebook messenger up today because uh, uh i don't know, blame you once the thing crashed yesterday i was just like ah, i don't know let me wait a few days for the dust to settle Right, give it some time to think about what it's done. <laughs> yeah, how's yeah, everybody? Absolutely. We are absolutely doing great. Actually, great, yeah. I, I shouldn't have introduced you because what I should have done is this. On the trombone, Mr. Greg Boya. Warm it up, Greg. Warm it up. <laughs> that's what I should have done. That should yeah. have been your intro. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to walk through a door. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right <laughs> now, Facebook will kick us all off because of displayed copyrighted music on uh, Facebook. So. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. okay. It's a good. How are you doing, sir? It is an honor to have you in the house. Actually, you know, I, I need to change this view, man. We we, we want to look at you and and none of us. How, how are you? First off, uh, you know, 
my apologies for you know being late i looked at this link early and i was like wait a minute i'm supposed to be doing this and i'm looking for <laughs> some kind of link to join or whatever and i didn't see anything so i looked it up and it looked like funktopia was a play that was broadcasting and this was uh, uh the last performance <laughs> it might be. <laughs> your view's not over yet. <laughs> well, look, if you want to do more of these, I'll certainly speak on your behalf. <laughs> well, it is an honor to have you in the house, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Greg Boyer. I don't know, this is, we don't normally uh, start this uh, uh, late for interviews, but I'm glad to actually get you on. Right. Um, yeah. Because, man, it, it again, it is an honor to have you on. I mean, your your career is extremely, extremely, uh, gosh, well versed. And you've you've done quite a bit. I mean, obviously, a lot of people here who are massive, massive Prince fans uh, know you from uh, your from ice cream. Cream. <laughs> <laughs> ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> um, <clears throat> That's an interesting story, but we'll get back to that in a second. Oh, oh yeah. The ice cream story. Yeah, we definitely we got to get the ice cream story. <laughs> Rob put that in notes. We got to get back to the ice cream story for sure. But we want to talk, you know, you are, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but as well as trombone, you are also a multi-instrumentalist. And um, what are some of the in other instruments that you were like really, really good at? And Rob was telling, we were kind of prefacing the show. Rob was kind of yeah. telling the story that you like to take instruments to the house and actually dissect them and and yeah so tell us tell us all yeah. about this well my grandfather was an electrician which probably had a lot to do with the reason why i like to find out how things work mechanically and right. and i was curious about other instruments man i would you know kids don't practice i would just take their instruments home learn how to play them and where they had rubber bands on the clarinets and whatever i was like you don't need that just put the spring back on and I would sit across the, the 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 band and look at the clarinet section and you know the, the person whose clarinet i took is looking like some kind of instrument fairy just came down and fixed their horn and i'm just <laughs> snickering my ass off right <laughs> wow yeah. so, so what are some of the instruments that you're some other instruments that you're really really good at playing um um probably only good at playing trombone and, and, and bass right now i learned how to play all of that other stuff but i haven't touched it in years so i, have you, I, have I made you... it my mission to learn how to play every instrument in the band before i graduated from high school really nice. yeah wow. have, have you actively played uh other instruments with other bands before i mean obviously you're you're known as one of the greatest trombone players ever but was there ever instruments that you played in in Act actively in a band other than trombone yeah my uh my first gig was on tenor sax when i was 15 years old and nice. right around the same time i was playing trombone in the high school big band and i was also playing bassoon with the concert band and tuba i was playing bass in church and and taking piano lessons and dreading every second of it because it was right around the same time that we used to play football in the afternoons so, oh. <laughs> so you were getting you were getting a workout carrying around a tube anyway so yeah i have a <laughs> we have in uh in my neighborhood our our school the middle school is actually walking distance from from in our from our neighborhood mm -hmm. and so they don't even send the bus over here there's a point to the story yeah. uh <laughs> and and we so the kids have to they have to walk from our neighborhood over to the school because they will not send buses over here. Yeah. Um, and there's this kid that lives in a neighborhood that plays tuba, <laughs> and I had to watch him <laughs> carry that tuba <laughs> up this long hill all the way. It was like, certainly they need to send a bus for this guy. <laughs> yeah. Just for him. Like, I always feel bad. I was like, do you want to like help? I, I don't want to offer to help you because I really don't want to carry that thing. <laughs> yeah, I legit, I, I really had cargo before I had a license. So you know, I was always <laughs> bumming a ride <laughs> with parents, you know, family members. Hey, can you pick me up and take me to whatever concert there is? Because I don't drive yet. And that might have been the catalyst behind. We need to get this little motherfucker a license real quick. <laughs> or at least a smaller instrument. 
<laughs> That's why I tell that kid every day. I said, "You need to switch to violins." <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to the harmonica. I'm good. I'm good. Right? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so like, who is your go-to for, you know, as, as a trombone player, who, who are you watching this? Like, Oh yeah, that's what I want to do. How did you even get into playing trombone? Was there somebody that influenced you or, I mean, who, yeah. who did you go to? Um, Rusty McKeon and Jeff Davis, they were the trombone that's players in the band I was playing in and they would routinely miss this note on this song called Colonel John. And it drove me knocking foots. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to go home, learn how to play trombone. And when I come back to school the next day, I'm going to show them, look, look, you some bitches need to play an A <laughs> and not an A flat. <laughs> I'm sick of this. <laughs> Actually show them how to play it. Yeah. And they never missed a note again. <laughs> play it play it right <laughs> so that's that's part of why uh i've heard you talk about the fact that you got perfect pitch so it's not a blessing necessarily it can be a curse yeah i mean i thought everybody had it my band teacher told me he say uh class what is the difference between this section and that section i think he was trying to get them to say the key change because mm -hmm. you don't know the word modulation when you're in fifth or sixth grade Right. I said, oh, it went from B flat to E flat. And he said, what's this? And you start playing on those. He said, you have perfect pitch. I'm like, BFD. You know, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everybody could do that. <laughs> They're all like, show off. <laughs> right? <laughs> everybody was like jealous. And you're like, man, it drives me crazy because you can't play it right. <laughs> well, I don't Taking think my they would because they didn't know what it was either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's unreal. Um so you began work with parliament funkadelic and that is uh i've got funk uh george clinton and funkadelic stories i'm not gonna tell them here but i know that you certainly you played with parliament funkadelic from 1978 to 1996 yeah and even i have seen them in concert obviously you've performed with them so you've seen them you've been there many many for many many years yeah uh, i have personally seen them probably about seven times i think seven or eight times in my lifetime Whoa! and i am um uh, i've seen george do some pretty crazy things on stage uh you like uh come out of the mothership with absolutely nothing on but sunglasses <laughs> and a wig <laughs> we, were, we were talking about, were, were, were you present were you present for that uh yes i was <laughs> I turn around and I like um I can't unsee this. <laughs> but you know at, at that point it was like oh that's just George is no big thing kind of. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that's when perfect vision becomes a curse. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. <laughs> Yeah, and I had heard the stories about Sly Stone joining uh, joining Parliament Funkadelic for like a really, really brief period of time, and and Sly Stone was at the bottom of the stairs of the mothership uh, at one performance, and uh, George came down in a very similar uh, state, and yeah. Sly turned around, and it was like almost right in his face, and uh, I think that was pretty much the end of Sly performing with Parliament. It was like, okay, we're done here. I am. Yeah. <laughs> this is not going to happen anymore. It, it, it's sly, so it's probably some other contributing factors that are probably um, of renown. So, <laughs> he may be remembering it just a little bit differently too. I uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's got his stories, but yeah, I, again, I have to be crazy. real careful too because you know I, I want to be a, a, a hotbed of some inside information, but at the same time, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. So, right, of course. Yeah, I'm treading lightly here. Yeah, right. uh, you know, yeah. I would I would say that I had some amazing uh, George Clinton stories, and I was talking about the fact that I was I had managed to be uh, got a press pass to cover Parliament Funkadelic and Yo Mama's Big Fat Booty Band in Athens, and watching him take a joint from somebody in the audience, like a random person that he'd never met before, hands him a joint and he fires it up. I happen to get a great shot of that, by the way. Um, and I was thinking to myself first you don't even know this guy. <laughs> it's like some of the things, some of the antics that he would do, it's just like he, he was almost like he was indestructible or he, he carried himself like he was indestructible. I mean, look, look at him now. He's 80 years old. He's a picture of health. 
Yeah, right? he's he's indestructible. I think he's going to outlast cockroaches. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, now now in that he does have a chair on the stage now, so he yeah. does he does sit quite a bit. Uh, yeah, which is the, the random random joint thing, thing, that, that was nothing. You see, when I first got in the band, people would just throw joints from the crowd. Just it's just like raining paper. It almost looks like they didn't <laughs> like the band, but it was all you know, it's all twisties, and you just light one up and I say, like, okay, this is pretty good. But the the one in the strawberry papers, I thought was a little bit better than that one. <laughs> you really didn't have a fear then. You, you kind of had a trust in the audience that you could just pick up a joint from off the stage and just burn it right there. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first time I met him, and you're right, he does have he, his energy level is totally different. The first time I met him was in '90. I don't remember. It was in the '90s, and it was Return of the Mothership. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it was P Funk All Star Show. Bootsy Collins came. It was at Atlanta at the Fox Theater. You were probably there. I probably uh, was. Yeah. Uh, and it was uh, George Clinton and, and Bootsy Collins made an appearance, um, which was a really, really big deal that Bootsy was there. Yeah. And I happened to have backstage passes and. Uh, went got an opportunity to go into George Clinton's uh, dressing room and he's jumping up and down in one spot and me just being silly I got on my knees and and I said it's an honor to meet you and he goes get the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> but he was but yeah he he was like jumping and spry and uh, yeah you're right he's gonna live forever man he's yeah. gonna live forever but I mean. So what was the the main reason why you stopped working with Parliament was because the lack of touring or was it what was going on there? It was, well, it was several contributing factors. You know, there was an influx of um, musicians that I didn't quite gel with. And yeah. I'm taking a high road when I say I that. that. I can um, see that. I can see that. And the the fiscal responsibilities were really being a bother, you know, money was sometime me and and it even musically i just didn't like what they had become i was in the band you know 83 and 84 and it was like a, a well-oiled machine and it was so far from that by the time i quit i just said i can't take this anymore and yeah. I, I i tried to get the, the the rest of the horn section to say you know we can and make some things happen if we can get out from under this but uh I, I was the only one to leave and 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 benny and greg's decided they were going to stay there and, and and be loyal to the 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 mothership and i was like uh, i think i need a bigger boat <laughs> and, and greg yeah greg is still yeah greg is still doing it he's, he's still doing it to this day i mean i think he's yeah. kind of and, 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 and in fact i just got back with them this past june really oh, wow yeah. for for the for the third the third uh final concert tour um <laughs> yeah, this is actually third final yeah however long it lasts but you know, i was yeah. and i i say that with kind of because he did his final show he was like i'm this is it i'm retiring we're done and we went to go see him in cobb i was like all right it's gonna final time we're gonna see george and parliament funk we saw it and was like great all right we saw it it wasn't like it wasn't that great sound wise it was like oh it was great again and then all of a sudden he had a second retirement okay i'm never going to do this again and he did it at the fox theater in atlanta and i saw him again i was like hopefully this is the last time and then when i saw this new announcement of another tour i was like don't okay. go for it don't go for it he says he's going to retire <laughs> like, come you know, on now this is three goodbyes <laughs> it, it's good PR, you know, it makes for, yeah. you know, a grandiose, uh, what do you call it? The guy that goes down the street, you know, rah, 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 bingo long, all stars and yeah. motor kings kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's good to say this is the last time because now everybody's going to come out of the woodwork because they think right. it's not going to happen anymore. But you right. got to think at this point, it's like uh, Lucy and Charlie Brown on the football. So, right. you know, they're gonna, you know, why are you still kicking? Yeah, why are you still kicking? It's like, right, exactly. Uh, I really, I really like what you said about um, when the when you're up there on the stage and the audience would throw, um, you know, things at you guys for you, actually. You and joints, it's okay. Yeah, you well, you it. know, it's, like it's okay. We're unedited here, Jeff. What I like, I, I don't want you to make it sound like it's run, you know, Hot Wheels and, and well, and see, that thing you said uh, about the stuff. <laughs> 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 it's it's the fact that you said 
you would trust the audience. Yeah. Because you can't, people don't, don't do that now. You don't trust anything or anyone. And the fact that you no. said that, your audience was special. You know what I mean? And when Very you say fun. that, it's a powerful thing. What was one of the craziest things that actually happened from a fan or an audience member on stage, you know, at that during that time? They all were. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can't put one above the other and um it was just all one big circus from the, yeah. from the time we i left the house to the time i came back home <laughs> i can imagine that, that, that's to be expected with uh we were talking about tales from the tour bus and how bootsy had said that they did this entire show uh yeah. did this entire concert under the influence of acid and they just did this entire show and they killed it and then the lights came on and nobody was there uh they had apparently <laughs> played to this room of nobody uh and, and i was like how does that even happen how, how do you perform <laughs> an entire show and then the lights come on and nobody's there and you it's it's you're just now realizing <laughs> no really it, I, I can see that when you're up on stage and the lights are shining in your face you can really only see maybe the first five or ten rows. Mm -hmm. Everything else you just assume is there, and <laughs> you could be right. You could be wrong, apparently. But and even the lighting guys, even the lighting guys, got to be like, they know there's nobody. What are you there? doing? I mean, unless it's one of those. I was only supposed to be here for an hour. Well, you know, somebody said, "Turn the heist lights on." I want to see everybody, and then yeah. you turn around right. and look, and there's nothing but like concrete and chairs. But it, it, and it, crickets. It got to that. <laughs> ten people, ten people sitting there in the chairs in the first two rows, going, "Go ahead, yeah, <laughs> yay!" That's <laughs> like Doc Ellis with Pittsburgh throwing that no hitter on acid. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah, we all know that drugs have, are responsible for some of the greatest things in history. Yeah, I've uh, only done that once, and I was like, oh, "I'm never going to do this again." acid or acid yeah yeah okay. mm. yeah matter of fact it was a nurse that gave it to me says look it's it's uh it's a tab of purple haze i'm only going to take half of it and i gotta work tomorrow and i was like friend of somebody in the group and i was like purple haze i was like oh, i'll find somebody that wants it and she says yeah but if you slip up and take this you know, make sure that you're around someone just in case you have an adverse reaction. And I didn't. I just ran up and down the bus all night <laughs> and I, I, I could not go to sleep. Oh, you know, just like ricochet rabbit, you know, for like hours. And oh, my God. Is this the P-Funk bus? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Aptly like, called, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. called the mothership. Called the mothership. Yeah. Yeah, I've I, I've I've done it a few times, and uh, the last time was a really really bad trip. I think I was uh, curled up in a ball on Rob's wife's lap. Uh, <laughs> it was yeah, like she had to talk things. you down. I remember that. Yeah, it was it was like one oh, of those. Well, bad times. Like, okay, we're done. This is. Yeah. <laughs> it was like no more of this. We're done here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Wow! Uh, but you were nicknamed Spider Man in P Funk. Tell me about how you got that. Uh, how you got that nickname? When the halls are somewhat close together, you can put your foot up on both sides and not touch the floor. So I just thought that was a really fun thing to do. And <laughs> after a while, I perfected it where I would put my hands <laughs> on one wall and my feet on the other wall, and I could just walk all the way down and. And, and Maceo tells the story of he's like he heard someone call his name and he's looking around and he doesn't see anybody, and then he just happens to look up, and I do this thing at him, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm over top of him. He tells Prince this, and Prince says, "I don't want you to doing that here in this building." <laughs> <laughs> I, and I, I'm thinking he's probably looking at the lawsuit aspect of it. What if I had an oops moment and I just go splat on the floor? I don't think he wanted to be liable. So <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, if that's what you wish, I'm not going to do Spider-Man at Paisley Park. 
<laughs> yeah, he's he's also a very superstitious fellow too, so he gets weirded out by that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, and I, I see a lot of comments in the the chat room of people commenting on some of the things you're saying. So, people in your chat room, if you have any specific questions for Greg, go ahead and and get them out there. I'll make sure that we we post them up here so that he can see them. So, if you got specific questions, I, oh, I have to I have to say that somebody mentioned uh, Lisa Loeb a minute ago. Um, <laughs> For whatever reason, my windshield cracked, and I jokingly posted a picture to crack and said, "I'm going to hire. I got a gig for Lisa." Oh. <laughs> it, it went over a few people's heads. They were like, "Really, Lisa Lowe?" <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing, and, and I'm going to say this for anybody that's watching that doesn't know, she's in the Geico commercial singing. They say. I got a crack in my windshield. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, it would have been great if she would have saw it. That would have been great. Yeah, right. I've grown to be quite the smarty pants in my old age, man. <laughs> yeah, we all have. So, that, so then you move from Parliament Funkadelic over to Maceo. How did that transition yeah. happen? And 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 well, we'll get the, the deeper I was I was sitting in with Fishbone. Oh. They they asked me to uh to, to go out on the road with them. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that because now in between all of that, there's some overlap with Chuck Brown. So I'm started playing with Chuck Brown in '89, and I still play with that band up to this day. But Chuck had we all had an agreement that if I had to go out on the road with anybody, that I'd be okay. And when I got back home, I'd be in the band again. So. Mm. I was doing a lot of gigs with Chuck Brown and a whole bunch of stuff. I turned the, the fishbone gig down, but they said, you're more than welcome to come and sit in with us when we played in the Bayou in DC. They happened to be opening up for Maceo. And I sat in with them and they were like, wait a minute. I didn't know fishbone had a, a trombone. So they came out of the dressing room and looked and he saw me and you know, Maceo and we go way back, you know, to the days of P-Funk. And he said, you want to sit in on a song? I said, yeah. Then he said, you want to do two weeks in Europe? I said, sure. <laughs> then he said, you want to do uh, two more weeks? And that turned into playing with him all the way up until now. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I just. Uh... But so much of this stuff, it's it's not like you're the best. You're, it's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. And yeah, when that time know. comes up, you, you just need to be ready. That's it. I mean, but think about all the legends you've played with, though. You play with Maceo, the legendary Maceo. You play with the legendary Prince. You play with the legendary George Clinton. I mean, that hat. I mean, hey, Graham Central Station and Gap Band. I mean, I mean, I know I could go down the whole resume <laughs> if we wanted to, but holy cow, dude! You know, like, I mean, that that just Stanley Clark you into the legendary status yourself, man. You, you have actually shared the stage with, you know bands that people worship i mean have you ever like taken a step back and and just really just reflected on just how blessed you've been in that in that aspect or how you've blessed them <laughs> that's true that's true yeah. Yeah. well you know you know once they hit the pinky ring they're good you know so <laughs> <laughs> no but <laughs> I, 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 I could see it. I, I got to take this all the way back to when I first got in the band with P-Funk. These guys were my idols. You know, I, I was like, I knew all of the songs, and I was a big fan of all of the artwork on the album covers. As a matter of fact, Pedro Bell was one of my favorite members mm -hmm. of P-Funk. And I'm out there on the stage, and then George comes to sound check, and I'm going to meet George M. F. and Clinton. Ah! Mm -hmm. I walked up to him and he said, hey, fellas, I heard you guys knew horn section. He was just so human, so affable. And I knew at that point that all of these people that are pedestal worthy or whatever are just regular folks deep down. Yep. You know, once you get them away from the crowds and all of that, you know, like, you know, people talk about Rick James, for example, as being this really outlandish guy away from all of that when he was just james ambrose johnson he was as cool as a bucket of ice really mm. and, and you don't see that side of these folks and and knowing that they have that just kind of it, it doesn't it, it kind of takes all of the the hoopla and fanfare off of meeting these people yeah 
Except yeah. Pam Greer. <laughs> That's right. Wait, you met Pam Greer? Yes. Oh, hold on. Tell us about story. that. <laughs> you probably didn't know. Just how well do you know Pam Greer? Yeah. I need to hear this. Not that well. No, no. <laughs> okay. Still listening. Quick story. Quick story. Okay, We're good. playing in Denver. She lives in Denver. And the promoter at the time was also managing the band. Is good friends with her. So we're up there doing knee deep, and I'm singing something about the music, Freak of the Week, la da you know the lyrics. Yeah. And someone says, Pam Greer is in the balcony. I take a disposable camera. I'm running through the crowd like it's fourth and goal with three seconds left. <laughs> and <laughs> I get up to the balcony, and she's sitting there, and she's holding the promoter's brand new baby. And I say, hey, Pam, you know, I says, hey, my name is Greg. You know, I'm in the band. She says, I know. <laughs> okay, get your composure quick i said look i'm you know i'm working so i, I just want to know if you would oblige me with a photo and she said sure I said, okay appreciate that then i gotta go and and so she takes a picture and i'm sitting there with pam and, and the little baby right there that looked like it could have been ours but <laughs> <laughs> and i take Sorry the picture for the time and I say, hey, thanks a lot. You know, you know, feel free to stick around after the show, or whatever. You know, if you feel so inclined. She said, sure. So then I go back through the crowd. Only this time, they don't see me. I'm running at them from the back because, you know, so they really pissed at me that I'm knocking their asses down trying to get back up on stage to play this <laughs> horn part. I get the picture developed a week later. The flash didn't go off. Oh. oh. <laughs> I see her on the Capitol Jazz Cruise about 20 years later, and I reminded her of that. And she says, well, look, you need to get a picture now. Why? You know you can. So <laughs> I have a picture with <clears throat> Pam Greer. Nice. Uh, it, wow. It, 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 <laughs> I, I, I've told the story. You can never trust a disposable camera. I Actually, well, this had nothing to do with the disposable camera, but I, I told the story about when I was at an after party with Prince and he came down the steps and, and I had managed to sneak a disposable camera in my bag and he came down the steps. This was at this club called Opera and I reached into my bag and I slowly pulled the thing out and I went click and I put it back in my bag and I still to this day have no idea what happened to that camera. <laughs> that would just be an amazing picture and I, for some reason I don't know what happened to it. Yeah. You know, that's funny. Um, I used to watch Trevor who was his, um, I guess, his bodyguard and, you know, his uh, assistant or whatever, would give people holy hell for having cameras, recording equipment. You know, one of those people, what, you have a camera? Give it here. Down on the ground, smash it. Oh, come you know, on. Like he's at a uh, Connie Corleone's wedding or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I just that's just insane. But uh, I do want to talk. We obviously have tons of, uh, as you can see behind me, um, and obviously we have tons and tons of Prince fans. Uh, we want definitely want to talk about your relationship with Prince because that is actually the core reasoning why we uh, we had a last. I go, well, a couple of weeks ago, we had a meeting with NPG. Yeah. Uh, we had Tony M, Levi Caesar Jr., Mike Scott. Who else was? It seemed like they were missing somebody. Was it somebody else that was on the show too? We we had yeah. was uh, Morris on it. Yes, Mor and Morris. Morris yeah. 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 So we had we had all four of them on. And we were talking about the '90s version of NPG, and uh, we wanted to actually talk about the 2000s version of NPG, and essentially. What really had changed with Prince between obviously the the the, the naughtiness of of the '90s with Prince to this all of a sudden this newfound spiritual guy that we're you know we're we're kind of witnessing. But before we get into that, though, I do want to talk about how you transitioned from Maceo to Prince, and from what I understand, Maceo uh, suggested you to Prince. Uh, when he was coming over to, to play with him. And how did that story all pan out as, as far as how your transition over to playing with Prince? Well, how Maceo got in was Prince was doing a session and was trying to get the sax player to, you know, play such and such like Maceo. Everything was like Maceo. Then he had the genius idea of going to get Maceo. <laughs> right. So, and, and 
the, the condensed version is he saw us playing together and he didn't want to break up the chemistry so he said bring the trombone player too now once maceo got there and he says oh by the way this guy does arrangements and, and all this other stuff and, you know he's, he's more than just a trombone player i was like yeah you told him that i said no mention wow. of my driving record though right said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and that's how that started i was in charge of cataloging all of the horn parts because you know maceo would go on tour and he would be replaced by Najee who would be replaced by Mike Phillips, who would be replaced by the return of Eric Leeds. So somebody had to chronicle all of this stuff. So we had to sit there and guess these notes. Oh yeah, Candy Dolfer was in and out also. Cause right. you know, she's a rock star in her own, right? Mm -hmm. And and I have a box downstairs in my garage of all of those handwritten horn arrangements that wow. Prince decided he wants to use another horn section. Um, the guys from Grupo Fantasma out of uh, Texas, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. wants to use them. He says, and send me all of those horn arrangements. So I was like, mm, yeah, I can do that. So I sent them to him. He called me up a week later and says, I'm going to put you on a plane and come out here because I can't, de I can't decipher this stuff. Right. So <laughs> it's called job security. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's one of the things I read about Prince, and a lot of people don't know this, is that he obviously knows how to write. He knows where all the notes are, but when it comes to actually reading sheet music, he's not uh, – that wasn't that wasn't one of his forte. It's not a big focus, but I think I, I – some one of the interviewers had managed to get that out of him, uh, the interview that he did, that, you know, he obviously knows where all the keys are, and he knows exactly where everything is on the piano yeah. and the guitar and everything, but when it comes to seeing it in sheet form – He's just, uh, it, it's, yeah, as you said. Yeah. Now, I, now yeah. one of the very first sessions I did with him, you know, this uh, myself, Macy and Candy, we go in there and, and finish this song, and we're going to take a break. Prince says, I, I, I want to write a little something for this next song. I was like, okay. So, I'm like, I want to see this, because I've heard the rumors that he didn't know music, but he could be doing one of those things where, Right. I'm only going to let certain people know. He gets a legal pad, you know, uh, 11 by 14, yellow paper. And in green highlight magic marker, he writes, help. And then he drops it on the uh, the console and just starts walking out. So I pick it up and read it, thinking I'm going to see some kind of uh, musical idea or whatever. I looked at it, and I just started snickering. <laughs> and I turned and looked at him. He just looked over his shoulder and just like, <laughs> <laughs> I just rigged it, yeah. Oh, you see, God. that that's, that's what awesome. I mean by you don't see people in their, their natural habitat. He was an absolute prankster. Oh yeah. Now we, yeah. we we've always heard the stories about him. Now, in, in regards to your writing though, I, I'm I'm curious about this, but I want to I wanted to ask you this before. One night one alone, night alone. Rob, Rob and I agree that one that one night alone tour was one of the best best concerts that we had I'd ever seen from Prince and I've seen Prince many, 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 many times. Um, and I, I was always, I think one of the things that was so, so cool about some of the horn arrangements and, and, and things is just, I, I always wondered who exactly wrote the horn arrangements. Were you responsible for like, let's just take xenophobia for instance, were you involved in the, in the horn parts for that song? Cause that song no. is fantastic. You weren't. That, that line is all Prince. Now, Really, a lot, of, a lot of those lines were Prince lines, but what he couldn't do was break it down uh, for the section. It's like, okay, maybe if you play this harmony, or, or if you play this, and then, you know, we he couldn't manage the section because he knows nothing about horns except for he likes what he likes. You, you put one up in his hands, or you know, up his mouth, or whatever, it might be the worst thing you ever heard. <laughs> So that that is not his uh, field of expertise at all. He just leaves that up to people that you know. Before me, it was um, Mike Nelson Hornheads, and before that, Eric and and Matt. Mm -hmm. And so you know, he just had this long history of people. And then, like after me, it was like Phil Lasseter and all of those guys. Yep. So. Who's got a great band named Filthy, by the way? If you guys not heard, it's pretty amazing. P I 
P H I L T H Y. Really super funky stuff with Phil. Lasker. Oh yeah, there he goes. He, yeah, we check actually, it out, yeah. yeah, he's 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 pretty phenomenal. But yeah, some of the weird stuff that some of the the horn sections and stuff that would happen, like uh, he would do this version. There was a Tokyo show where he, he did his version of Sign of the Times, which was really ethereal. And this it's got this really weird guitar breakdown, and the horn sections all of a sudden come out and go, but <laughs> just like these random, yeah. random hits um, and stabs. And I've always tried to, I always wondered who exactly was responsible for some of that, some of that structure, because some of that stuff is is amazing. Yeah, I, I think Renato uh, gave us the core line and then say, oh. okay. You know, you guys do what you do, work with this. And it's like, okay. And mm. like even Prince, he would have these fits, like he would do on this cannonball Adderley tangent, or he would just, you know, immerse himself into some Wayne Shorter. And mm. he would ask me to, you know, throw together, you know, versions of those tunes. Like uh there might be uh, someone's access a video of us doing footprints on the sound check. Now I arranged that for the uh, horn section. Oh, wow. um, Very cool. we all just take solos. And, and then, you know, Maceo, he was notorious for just like coming off with these little licks that were real simple, but yeah. with executed properly with the section would just be like gold and he was notorious for that that's some of that old school mm -hmm. james brown stuff which um one of the things i learned from mace is you know it it doesn't matter how intricate the horn line is if it's executed properly it's going to sound good right yeah. now you're you're still actively playing with maceo now as much as he's he hasn't played since we all got called home from europe last year Oh, gotcha. So yeah. what? So um, if you had a look at your career from George Clinton to to Maceo to I mean, I mean, there's a laundry list of the people that you've worked all, with. All of them. I mean, what is one of the one is the one of the biggest takeaways that you've had from any of the artists that you've worked with that you still carry to this day as far as performance is concerned? Because I know that Prince's focus on how you perform and how you carry yourself on stage to the presentation to everything that had to be a huge impact but is there something specific that you can think of throughout your career that that one artist that you work with regardless of who it was well you know prince scary. like before we did musicology we were up in burbank rehearsing 10 hours a day for months mm. and mm. then you know we went out on the road then he's like okay i want to tweak this so he was a, a huge proponent of preparation mm. you know, once things become a habit then you can't fall on your ass but also he was a proponent of spontaneity like keep things fresh so we would rehearse the show to a t you get the sound check the next day he's like i want to take this song out i want to stick this in and here's what the segue is going to go like so we're going over it at two to perform at eight o'clock with a meal in between so <laughs> with, with prince I, I think the the preparation was what made him far different than anybody else. The the preparation and the presentation. Now, on the opposite end of that, you have somebody like George Clinton that would rarely practice at all. <laughs> I can and, see and that. It's, we it's just, evident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, somewhere in between, you've got the the, the spit polish. Um, Maceo Parker, you know, James Brown, you know, ten dollars if your shoes ain't ten dollars fine if your shoes aren't shine kind of thing. And <laughs> and then you've got like Chuck Brown where the groove is all you need. And if you're have enough musical acumen enough to put something on that groove that's not going to destroy it, then you're doing the job. But you know, no matter what those gigs are, and this counts for any of them. Once the downbeat hits, you're either prepared or you have really sharp reflexes and mm. you'd be able to spin on a diamond in a performance. So, and, and, and I take that with me. I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, the music is only part of it. You know, you still have to be on time. You still have to have an instrument or tools that work. 
you still have to have well-fitting clothes. I say any working musician musician should have a decent black suit for starters. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, just little things like that that they don't teach you at Berkeley. That's like you know, play the scale really fast and 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 mimic this ghost or that ghost, and we're going to give you a degree. And it's a lot more to doing this music thing professionally than just that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because when you look at how tight we are, again, going back to One Night Alone, how tight that show was. Yeah. Um, it was it was very stoic because it was one of the it was one of the few shows. He was always really loose with with set lists and stuff. But that particular show was specifically the beginning part before he went into the Prince Piano and microphone portion of that show. Yeah. Uh, was very. It starts here with Rainbow Children, mm. and it goes to this, and this is kind of where it's at. But, you know, all the choreography and the outfitting and the stage design that happens with those tours, you know, you're talking about specific suits. Um, everybody looked perfect, the part, and there's got to be a real, real specific look that happens, and Prince has got to be okay with that look. Did you get to choose your own clothes, or did you... Uh, did it give you any issues with something that you did choose or yeah. you know, how much control did you actually have as an individual with that man? Well, I, I have to think that a lot of the reason why he had us wearing suits all the time on that tour, because he was uh, enamored with Maceo's band. We right. were a suit and tie band. And if you were in a rhythm section, you, you could get away with wearing a vest. But if you were on the front line, you had a suit and you really put some thought into what tie, what shirt, your shoes. And for me, it was laces. You know, I always had to have laces and socks. That was my my um, my own little thing. That, uh, right. I, I like that. <laughs> and, and Prince saw that, and I think he was like, and when I go back out on the road again, my band will have suits also. So mm. one night alone was that, you know, the, the pseudo jazzy kind of thing. And he just felt like the suits went with it. You know, it was just like, you know, a holdover from Blue Note days of, you know, Miles Davis and, right. you know, all of those guys up on the bandstand that really had respect. And, you know, Macy will be the first one to tell you that I think that, you know, even with P Funk, for all the outlandish stuff that they wore, they really put some thought into what they were wearing on stage. They didn't oh, yeah, just yeah. come from down the street. Right. I was under the car changing the oil and just get up there and start playing, you know. Yeah, well, so it, yeah. it, in the early days of that, yeah, I see some some of the stuff I see them wearing on stage nowadays is like, okay, uh, yeah, there's no rhyme or reason, but there it always seemed like there was a purpose and a specific look that that Prince was going for. Yeah. To get to the core, of what um, you know, we were talking about the NPG version of the '90s version of the NPG versus the 2000 versions of NPG. Was there something specifically, because I remember one of the distinct things I remember, and I've said it many times in the show, was in 2001 at that tour when he said he was no longer going to use profanity from the stage anymore and um, because he wanted the, the concerts to be family friendly and he changed everything. I mean, even the, the, the classics and everything else. Was there anything specific as you as a band that you... Um, and that endures the right word, but that you experienced as a result of this newfound spirituality, you know, outside of swear jars and everything that uh, was really imposed on you as a band. Well, I, I think if you guy. were like a, a a barroom brawler or any of those type of people, you had to really tone your thing down because mm -hmm. you know, no swearing, uh, definitely no meat. You know, he had a chef to come in and cook for. So you had to, like, close the doors in these arenas because they're cooking hot dogs out there because the concert is getting ready to start. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the whole arena is smelling <laughs> like a baseball game. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but, no, his – I think that the biggest change was he didn't put his body – through as much stuff when in the 2000s as he did in the 90s. He, of course, was older, but I, I think if he wanted to, he would have at least tried. But, you know, as it turns out, you know, he was in an immense amount of pain from all of that jumping around and doing the splits and jumping off the speakers all at 
excuse me, all those years. Wearing those high heels Wearing all the time. Yeah. 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 That's just it, what was what was the first time that you actually saw a lot of the evidence of that of that pain? I'm not gonna dig too deep into this, but I, I I'm just curious. That just happened to come out of my mind. He was pretty good at hiding it. You know, if you sit there and you squint and you look at him with one eye and say, I see you hurting, you don't fool me. Like he had a cane. The cane was beautiful. And he just had the cane. He just walked with it like, you know, somewhere between um, uh, Fillmore Slim and Mr. Peanut. <laughs> Monocle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whole thing, man. And he was just real cool about it. And and, and yeah. he 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 did a good job of masking it. And I, I think that, you know, when you just saw him not walking around a whole lot and just not being omnipresent, and you it was a pretty good guess. Yeah, yeah, he's probably not feeling that good. And, you know, that was the other strange thing, too. We would have these rehearsals and sound checks and stuff. And it was like he would just morph up out of the floor. You never saw him enter a room. <laughs> I hear <laughs> he that was, story all he, the he time. He was just there. <laughs> you know, he would get a cordless mic and, and then just walk like some back entrance. And then he'll start... You know, we're down there playing, whatever. And he says, hey, can you go over such and such part again? And you, you don't know where he is. You just hear the voice. You know, it, it's almost like I want you to build an ark or something. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, now, he's in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So now everybody's looking around and like, okay, who can spot him first? And it's like, okay, I see him. He's over there. He's way up in the B or C section, you know, just sitting like almost behind the back of the chair. They're just giving us orders and what to play and everything. So I, I think once we found out who he was, then he would come down on the stage and then run rehearsal from there. But I just thought that was the funniest thing. Like he had ele- little elevators under every seat and he would just come up out of the floor. <laughs> I always hear those stories. Everybody would say, yeah, I was staying there. And all of a sudden I turned around and he was there. <laughs> and then so we heard like Rick, there's, uh, I was talking to some lady at uh, Electric Fetus in, in Minneapolis and he, she was telling her story. Yeah, he used to come in here all the time and it didn't even look like he walked. It looked like he was floating. <laughs> like, yeah. And I couldn't find out that he loved those shoes that had the, the wheels on the back of the heels. Yeah. And so what he would do is instead of walking, he literally would like roll, like <laughs> would roll he through would. the record. It was like, this guy, uh, you can't even enter a room like a normal person. <laughs> now, now he had impeccable style. We all know that. Absolutely. And, you know, yes. Was, you know, yeah. Way ahead of the game. So consistent. But no way in hell I'm going to wear anything on my feet that's flashing, <laughs> blinking, or rolling. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> These are some grown ass feet. I'm gonna. <laughs> oh my gosh! You said that you were quoted as saying that working with Prince is a musical equivalent of being in the fire department. What do you? Yes. Do you, you mean details about that? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've said that on a number of occasions. He would just ask you to play whenever. It, it, it's just, I think I need a band, and it could be four in the morning. He says, "I want everybody downstairs in an hour. We're going to do an after party." I'm like. At four in the morning, nobody knows anything about an after party. So I'm like, okay. So I got to get up out of bed, you know, put on, you know, my best giggy clothes. And that's the other thing, too. Don't change when you get there. Be ready. I showed up at a rehearsal once in Breakaway Sweats, and he, and he said, we don't do that. I was like, okay. And I'm thinking, tomorrow uh, I'm going to wear a suit. He had Trevor to go out and buy me a suit that afternoon. An hour and a half later, Trevor comes in and says, here, put this on. So it just lets you know he was real serious about appearance. And yeah. that's what I got from that. Because, you know, when you're at that level, paparazzi is everywhere. They're hiding in trash cans. Uh, they had drones before drones were drones. So yes. you, know, you just have to not look like a, 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 a ragamuffin at any time so we we're doing the um the thing get downstairs an hour get transportation we go to uh, some undisclosed location and there's a thousand people there and i'm like how the fuck did they find out <laughs> <laughs> <They're> not undisclosed <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's i mean is any specific- it was amazing that's what i mean man it's like you know 
the uh the 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 bataclan is on fire you know go over there and start a more a bigger fire and then put it out that's why i meant by it was like being in the fire department mm. you know, there was no such thing as a day off you yeah you're talking about those after parties because some of those nights where they would just go he would just play forever he just got done doing a two and a half hour show and then he turned around and, and ugh, we can go back to that too because i do want to talk about the length of the friggin' shows of george clinton and parliament funkadelic which i still don't friggin' understand to this day the the amount of time these these guys play but to have one of these shows with prince where he's playing two and a half hour shows and he takes like an hour break and then he shows up someplace else and plays another two and a half hour shows uh i imagine you've played your fair share of those types of appearances is there yeah. any is there one specifically like the one you mentioned is there one specific that really really stands out where you're like wow this is insane that we're like in the basement of this <laughs> apartment building or something it's just something yeah, it was it, it they were all you know pretty much wow i can't believe this is happening because you know social media wasn't on fire then like it is now and, and mm -hmm. how he would drop these hints and all of these people got word of it maybe it was the the mpg club or something i don't know but mm -hmm. i remember doing an after party when i walked outside the sun was coming up mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow that's I was like, yeah, this is a 24-7 job. If, if there was any moment in my life where I, I really knew at that point, that was it. Man. <laughs> so I just, you said, wait, wait, wait a minute. Jeff, remind me. He When we started the show, he said there was a story that he had to share. The ice cream. Oh, about ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Yes. Ice cream. Ice cream. We, we, we got it. We got to hear this story. I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to drop the ball or get at the end of the interview and go, "Oh crap, we didn't ask him about that." All okay, right, so Prince, Manny in the elevator. Larry Graham, Tina Graham in the elevator. Maceo's in the elevator, and I'm in the elevator. So I walk in. I look at Larry Graham, who's wearing all white, and I just start saying, uh, "I want a nutty buddy." <laughs> and uh, get my sister vanilla cone and, 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 and my little brother wants a bomb pop so i hope you're cool with that and larry looks at me and he is hysterically laughing he can't believe this prince his mouth is, is, is just like ah you can't say that to the honorable larry graham i was like dude look at him he's laughing i just couldn't believe i was saying that to larry and, and maceo is like Man, you've lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Almost a year, I say somewhere between six months to a year later, we're doing a video to musicology and they're laying out the wardrobe. Guess what Prince asked me to wear in that video? <laughs> All white. <out. laughs> All white. <out. laughs> I was like, oh, you dirty rotten. So anyway, oh, soon after we shoot that video, you know, they everybody in the band had a wardrobe case you know full of suits shirts and everything and you know the word would come out tonight's color is gold and white so anyway he announced that tonight's color was white and i go out on stage and it's time for me to take a solo he just yells looks at me and yells ice cream <laughs> 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 And from that point on, whenever he wanted a bone solo, he would just yell ice cream. <laughs> wow. Because nice. it, it, if I could borrow from a Kung Fu movie, I made fun of his master. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. Master. Yeah, oh my God. I knew Larry. Well, I met Larry from when I was playing with P-Funk. So, you know, I had known Larry way before, you know, any of that stuff is a good seven to eight years prior to. Hmm. So, you know, uh, you know, I, I knew Larry. I felt like I could say that kind of thing to him and it wouldn't be an insult. So and it wasn't, you know, he just laughed at it. And, you know, to yes. this day, you know, Larry and Tina and and friends with me and, and my wife also you know we just like you know four peas in a pod when we get together yeah. and you know the other thing too was prince was like oh you know i just want to see how spiritual you are you know just, you know, how much of a heathen are you do i need to heal you 
and I would drop little hints that like, look, dude, spiritually, I'm all right. You might want to save that effort for somebody that really needs it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. And, and and Larry knew, you know, Larry knew we'll sit there and, and, and talk, you know, go over a few things. And he's like, uh, I think that brother's okay. You know, he, he's not gonna fall into the uh the, the quicksand and, and and the road to pestilence and the den of iniquity and all of that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and speaking of spirituality, I mean, I, I've you know heard stories that he used to have prayer meetings, and he used to have um, you know different types of. Uh, did you did you see any of that, or participate in any of that, or did he impose that on any of the band members? He he did impose that on some of the band members, you know. It it and it, I, I think it might have been you know anybody that just couldn't say no. It didn't want to say no. I, you know, me, I, I had, you know, I had nose in all my pockets. <laughs> so, right. But yeah, he did. He would, you know, like go to Kingdom Hall and take some people in the band with him and and just, you know, stuff. Yeah, he was. And matter of fact, he even went door to door. Yeah, I heard I heard the story that yeah. him and Larry Graham yeah. used to do it yeah. did it together yeah. a couple of times. I couldn't imagine yeah. what it would be like to get a knock on the door and have Larry and Prince standing there. It's like even if yeah. I didn't believe what you were saying, I'm still inviting you in and you're, you're going, coming in. But you know, if you live in out <laughs> in Panhas in Minnesota somewhere and the only thing you know is is Abba BGs and Merle Haggard, <laughs> you probably <wouldn't, laughs> you probably wouldn't know who Prince and Larry Graham were. Uh, yeah, probably. It's, it's like, on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, it's uh, funny man some of them old 70s songs man i've really developed an appreciation for you know some of that stuff like casey and the sunshine band i um, did not like that stuff when i was you know that age but as i've gotten mm-hmm. older i was like wait a minute you know that thing got a little bit of stank on it i think i kind of like that yeah. and dancing queen was one of those songs <laughs> I, 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 feel I have like, to admit, you're right. It's if you yeah, make, absolutely. If you can make a good jazz tune out of it, it's a well written song. And I, yeah. I bet I could swing the hell out of Dancing Queen and it would go over great. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. That's one of those songs that I can appreciate and love to hear, but I can't sing it out loud. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> no, you can. <laughs> Well, you can. It may not sound good, but you can do okay, it. It depends on what <laughs> avenue you want. You know, you, know, oh, yeah. you don't want to be out there in in, in, in the barrio, you know, uh, uh, singing uh, uh, Starlin vocal band, or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking out the Starlin vocal band. I like. Oh, you think any of them are listening? I'm not. You know down in that i'm just saying it's you know, no, I get it. it's another kind of market man. there was a lot of arrangements there was a lot of arrangements going on with that band i'll tell you that right now yeah, i keep, yeah. really, we keep seeing these questions about uh bonnie boyer stacy boyer says i'm black and i know we all don't all know each other <laughs> and all yeah. like it was the same surname aren't related but did you know bonnie boyer before npg i did not know and i, I met her when i got with npg and, and, and she was just laugh out loud boisterous and i was like look you know i gotta ask because you don't see many black folks named boy around so you know you got family in philly or over there in east pennsylvania <laughs> somewhere and she said not that i know of so i was like well you don't sound related anyway so i just left it alone i don't i don't think we're related but you know yeah. maybe way way down or way way up in the family tree perhaps because because my my wife's surname is Boyer, my in laws are Boyer. Wow! <laughs> so when I told when Not I told Eastern Pennsylvania, <laughs> actually they are from Pennsylvania. Ah, uh-huh. see, <laughs> see, there you There's go. There's a Boyer town, Pennsylvania, and every year they have some get together where everybody whose last name is Boyer just converges on this. It's kind of like the uh, the Sturgis rally of Boyer. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're actually going to be converging this week. Left one side. Uh, so, right. so if you go and watch, are you a boy or voyeur? Shows over, folks. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, man, actually, I'm just here for the food. 
<laughs> we're actually uh, converging on Pennsylvania on Friday. We're actually going to be going to Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. She's visiting family up there. But yeah, yeah. so yes, we got some boyers in the house. Um, <clears throat> man, I, there's. Hey, you were wait. Hold on a second. You were talking about uh, doing covers of uh, of songs, and I, I when I was doing some of the reading up on this, I I, uh, I saw that you had worked with uh, Mike Phillips on yeah. uh, that pulling off the covers uh, album. Yeah, and uh, it just got. I, I like. I'm gonna listen to this, and 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 I, I, I it just kind of blew me away. And I know that's kind of popular nowadays. Uh, you know, doing the the covers, uh, doing a little jazzy version of the covers or whatever. But oh. there's some great stuff on there. Just the two of us. What a fool believes. Hmm. But what really blew me away was Three's Company. Wow, I was <laughs> like, I can't believe <laughs> that you took this song. <laughs> And made it so entertaining. Now, I'm, gonna I'm, gonna show, how much? I'm gonna do a gig with Mike Phillips like in, 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 in a couple of weeks. <laughs> you know, he's gonna be doing some East Coast dates, and he oh, like, yeah. oh, oh my god! I have a horn section here in town called the Beltway Horns. Yeah, yeah. yeah tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you know, we just hire ourselves out and stuff, and he's going to get those guys to play with his band. And he, I mean, three's a company. Uh, thank you for being a friend. Do, do, uh -huh. do, do. <laughs> that gig is probably one of the hardest, musically, one of the hardest gigs I've ever done. Wow. Because he just throws everything. It's like taking a, a, a three foot wide blender and throwing in nuts, bolts, and screws. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everything. It's the whole kit and caboodle. He, he does hip hop in the straight ahead jazz into a version of pop life that morphs into uh, a groove and high by bird oh it just oh, man. It, musically no stone is unturned it's an unbelievable show and it's entertaining at the same time wow so, wow yeah, yeah so yeah mike that, that is who, who i refer to as the bugs bunny of jazz um, <laughs> lots of voices in. Yeah. How much? Uh, how much input did you have on that album? Was it mostly just arranging? The, uh, um, yeah. How much input, input did you have on that? Um, what's that thing? Uh, I can't remember the song off the top of my head. But he, oh, he, because I'm old, I draw blanks all the time, man. So, um, but whatever that song is, he says. I'm giving you complete autonomy on these horn arrangements. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so <laughs> I had so much fun doing it. And God, if I can remember the name of that song, I'm going to. Um, you had to pull, pull up the track but, list of that. Uh, yeah, of that I was album. just thinking, um, I think I got it right here because I was just listening to it. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. um, and while you're doing that, tell us about what is the Greg Boyer Peloton? And Greg Boyer Peloton is, well, I have two bands and, and they're like mirror images of each other. The Greg Boyer Peloton is your, your, your typical blue note quintet, you know, suits, upright bass and, right. and all of that stuff. But instead of doing all of that stuff out of the fake book and the real book, like all those other guys do, I do like covers of Sade, oh, Blondie, nice. Foreigner, uh, Funkadelic, you know, just all kinds of stuff that you would never expect uh, a jazz band to do. Are you guys touring? I love that. No, no, no. Um, um, would you? I, 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 I would. I would. You know, uh, I can't entertain the thought of going on tour with any of that stuff without some product to promote. Mm. Uh, so, you know, Fair once enough. the CD is finished, then, then I can go ahead and say, okay, we need to go on the road and promote this. That way they say, if you really liked our concert, we have some merch in the back. We have some CDs and T-shirts. Right. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> yeah. yeah, but I have really a, I have another band. The other band is called Pocket Jazz. No, Pocket deriving from that DC Being go go pocket. pocket. But oh, we okay. don't do R and B tunes. We do jazz tunes. You know, we do Miles, uh, Wayne Shorter, oh. and. and and it, it just all that kind of stuff, man. Weather report. So, wow. Yeah. So, the, so, like I said, the mirror images of each other to the point. So, but I, I Peloton, I got that name because everybody like, 
the so-and-so quartet, quintet, so-and-so group, so-and-so band. And I was like, what can I call a cluster of people uh, that a name that hasn't been used before? And I reached into my cycling bag and I just called it the Peloton. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Rob actually pulled up the, the list here. Here's a song list of the, uh, the covers. We got stuff. Watching You, September, Flavin Year, which I, 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 Steve, that song. Fine China. That's a, that's a Chris Brown song. Um, I'm trying to, uh, I can't move this screen. I, oh, I it's, it's it. intro watching you, September. Oh, what a fool believes. Don't ask my neighbors. Uh, flavor in your ear. Uh, people make the world. Just the two of us. Fine China. Three's company and keep it moving. Oh, uh, what was that before? Three's a company. Fine China. Yeah. I think that's it. That's that's okay. it. That's, that's, right. that's, that's a Chris, that's Chris it. Brown remake. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's a that's that's a great song. For, for that's funny. Guys, I was listening to that song, and uh, you know, I had read a, a a review of it, and somebody was like, "I really like this album, but Fine China doesn't really do it for me." And I was thinking to myself, "I don't know what you're talking about. I love that song. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> everything on there is just just yeah, spectacular, it's fantastic." Uh, yeah. Alina asks, uh, "From what you could see, did Prince have a certain affinity toward female musicians, or ever mention if he preferred working with women?" Oh, uh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm over. Basically, Fine it's China. The, yes, that's it. Fine China. It is. Right. Of, I'm assuming it's the remake of the Chris Brown song, which is a great, it's one of my favorite songs by him by far. It's such a great tune. Uh, but, uh, anyways, um, we will definitely pick that up because uh, you actually mm -hmm. get points on that album since you had <laughs> complete <laughs> autonomy, at least, at least a song or so. So uh, it's a great album, according to Rob. I'm going to check it out. I did not get an opportunity to see it, but um, uh, hey, can you still see me. Yeah, I can still see you. Okay, because yeah. you know I'm behind a couple of screens and I don't know how I got there, so I can't see you guys, but I can hear you real well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's break out the facial expressions, boys. Freeze! Man, oh man. <laughs> I am having the hardest time. There we are. Okay. Okay, there we are. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alina, Alina asked, she said, uh, did Prince have a certain affinity towards female musicians or ever mention if he preferred working with women? I mean, I know that. I, I think that he did. He loved working with women. Um, <laughs> but uh, was it something that you saw firsthand? Um, I think, well, you know, just from being a guy, and, you know, I, I might get in trouble for saying this, but women, they're, they're a better looking band than guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, definitely. yeah, they are. Absolutely. But, you know, <laughs> the, the look is one thing. You still have to be able to play your uh, your instrument. And, you know, you got the likes of Rhonda and Candy mm -hmm. and uh, Roseanne, R-A-D, period. Yeah, you know, those type of people, you know, you're not sitting there and just saying, okay, for a girl, you know, it's like them right. mofos can no. play. Right. Yeah. Rhonda's a force to be reckoned with. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much every single female he's ever had in a band is a force to be reckoned with from Third oh, Eye no. Girl all the way, dating all the way back to, you know, uh, pre Wendy and Lisa with uh, uh, Gail. And uh, I mean, just. Yeah, Gail. Yeah. He's never. Yeah. Has he ever had any women in his band that were not a force to be reckoned with? It's just, it's, yeah, gosh, he, it's a monster. Where do we go to get Greg Boyer merch? Good question, Patty. Um, let me see. I got this, um, uh, Tron Boyer t shirts. You probably, I wear them all the time. So if you just pull up some pictures or whatever, you can see them. And, um, my website is down. I hate mm -hmm. saying that, but it is. And, you know, once that's back up and running, then you can get uh, Greg Boyer T-shirts or Beltway horns. It's an interstate sign, four ninety-five. But instead of putting the name of the state, it says Beltway horns. I have those available. Um, well, just this, so you know, this guy and this guy, yeah, Mr. Christopher and Jeff, we both do website development stuff. So if you need any help getting it up, just let us know. We'll help you out. Uh oh, um, problem. 
we'll 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 get you we'll get you back up run it <laughs> <laughs> no but you know we'll, we'll that's really uh greg right yeah yeah so we'll, we'll make we will we'll, we will do make it our our goal to to help you out get back online so people can get some greg boyer merch because yeah. yeah extra stuff so so what are you doing now you said you weren't touring with maceo because he's kind of been out of the mix since uh pre-pandemic what yeah. um what what's going on with you now? What are you doing? Well, um, still, like I said, playing with the Chuck Brown band. Oh, that's right, right, right. Uh, so you know, even in Chuck's absence, the band is still going. It's uh, Frank Sirius, aka Scooby. He's playing guitar and singing lead. And the cool thing I like about him is, is he really honors the legacy of Chuck Brown without trying to look and sound like him. Everybody like I yeah. sound just like Chuck. I need that gig. Like no. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. We don't need any, as they call, make pretend Chuck Brown. <laughs> <laughs> and and right. this guy is unbelievable musician, great player, uh, great singer, does more than guitar, plays keys, and a whole enchilada. So, you know, the Chuck Brown band is still out there. And as mentioned earlier, I'm still doing, um, I'm back with um, P Funk. We'll be uh, doing some dates in. Well, a date in New York on November 12th, D.C. on the 13th of November, and Lubbock, Texas, a place I've never been to before on November 20th. Now, How far is that from you, Rob? Uh, it ain't close. Okay. Nothing in Texas is close. I'm in Arizona, in Phoenix, so. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, nothing in Texas is close. No, I drove, <laughs> I drove from D.C. to L.A., I moved out there back in the 80s and then i drove from la back to dc and every time i drove across texas it was a day's ride by car not by oh, horse yeah. Wow. oh yeah easily it's like, texas so rob, is huge <laughs> you have no excuse rob you need to be at one of the shows it's gotta be i would love to <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to be at uh, oh. i don't know what festival it is but december 18th we're going to be out at that new uh, stadium out there in la Oh, uh, nice. Now nice. LA is a little bit closer. I can go to LA. Okay. Yeah, Martin <laughs> Martin Kimber, uh, who is actually going to be on our show on the nineteenth, was it? This nineteenth of October. Uh, he's from Color Me Bad. Amazing vocals. I'm not sure if you uh, are familiar with Martin Kimber, but he's phenomenal. Uh, amazing, amazing vocals, but he's apparently going to be sending you a formal invite on Messenger to join uh, him and the unit as a special guest on November twentieth. If you happen to be in that uh, DC area. Um, but yeah, Martin Kember and Color Me Bad. There's uh, you all remember them. But yeah, and actually, Alina says hello from Austin, Texas. <laughs> so I don't. I am like geographically challenged. I don't know how far Austin is from uh, Lubbock, nor do I know uh, how far Arizona is from. There, just, right? just, apparently. Assume, just assume that you're going anywhere in Texas. Uh, you know, it's a four drive. hours is what they refer to as right around the corner. Right, <laughs> it's always a road trip it's commute. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're going yeah. from Austin to San Antonio, that's about as close as two cities are going to get in Texas. Right. Yeah. yeah it's, wow. It's, you know, we did the same thing when we moved out here from Georgia, from Atlanta, and we drove through Texas, and that took forever. That's a that's a whole another story. But yeah, it was just it was in, it was interminable. It was forever. Yeah, we have a couple more. Uh, well. Yeah, also, when you said you were moving, um, you had your U-Haul broke down, if I remember correctly, and you had to like drive 20 miles an hour through certain, no, certain Oh, states. Okay, so quick quick part of the story is this. It was 6 a.m. in the morning. Our U-Haul been, had been broken down multiple times. We're getting into El Paso, and I, and I can only drive 15, 20 miles an hour because the governor's stuck. And I look up, and I see the sign says um, – Highway, we're on Highway I-10, tw next 20 miles, one lane. <laughs> Everybody's going to be very pleased <laughs> behind you. <laughs> Why is this happening? Jeremy wants to know, have you ever met Trombone Shorty? I have. Y'all work together, right? Yeah. A couple times. yeah. And man, my wife is like... Rrr. She, she hates any trombone player that's not Greg Boyd. <laughs> that's you good for you, though. That's who you want in your corner. And this you want. the guy, and she's like, he's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, the first time I saw him, surprisingly enough, he was opening for the Dave Matthews Band in Atlanta, and I had never seen him. And uh, he opened up, and I was just like, "Who is this guy? This guy's incredible." Yeah. Like, not as good as Greg Boyer, but he's really good. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm humble. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get your pinky ring out. <laughs> no, Maceo opened up for Dave Matthews back in '99. We did a a ten day run, and I have never seen anybody play music that intricate and that so far off of the pop grid and have that many you know these teenagers were like ah screaming and bringing their moms and dads that were screaming also i that to this day i cannot figure out how that worked and it just goes to show you you can't write a hit and you don't know what's going to take off and and what you know what will you just can't tell yeah he's, Dave Matthews is, <laughs> he's an alien for sure yeah. um but uh greg i i gotta tell you uh it's been an honor having you on the show i'm i'm sorry if there was like a miscommunication on my part or whatever that you end up getting here late i that that could be my fault but it's 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 all good i'm glad that we got an opportunity to, to sit with you and I'm, talk with you i'm, t- I'm telling you when you you said uh we i was talking early we're going back and forth i see you on the screen i'm sending messages and stuff only thing i thought of was the wolf on pulp fiction <laughs> <laughs> i wish you could have seen me driving now it's a little bit rainy out there but you know oh, in the God. slow sections i was going 80. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. so I, I i feel really because you know me and the clock you know have a pretty good relationship so i'm i'm not late for anything so i i really feel bad about this and my apologies to all of those people that you know went and and and, and watching uh below deck or something like that <laughs> because oh, no. this wasn't happening fast enough. it was still great I, this is a weird yeah. question cameron asked can you still do a one-handed handstand <laughs> yes yeah oh, I can. wow that's nice wow. You know what? You know, it, it, it seems hard, but it, it's a secret to it. First off, if you put Balance. your feet apart, it makes it much easier to do it. Don't sit there and try to do two handed one stance and just take your arm away. You're going to fall over. Right. So, so spread your feet apart, and then you can do a one handed handstand. It's, wow. Yeah, it's pretty simple. All right. Yeah, we're gonna awesome. do it. I'll, I'll just see it live. Yeah. I'll just see it live. We, we'll be waiting for that video. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, before you go, is there any possible way I could get a bumper for you that we could put on the radio station? I don't know if you're aware of this, but we have a radio station that runs 24 7 called Funked Up. We have the Funked Up app and we have uh, bumpers from everybody. Uh, but if there's any way you can give us a bumper, say, uh, this is Greg Boyer and you listen to Funkatopia or anything along those lines, it'd be fantastic. Yeah. It's going to cost you a shot of Henny, but you got it. I'll buy you a bottle of Henny. A bottle. No, really, I'm just joking. I don't. I don't drink. Only on New Year's and maybe my birthday. That's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Any, 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 anytime you're ready, we'll pull it from wherever. So, uh, what do you want me to say? Uh, anything that's on the top of your mind, just say. But basically, uh, this is Greg Boyer, and you're listening to Funkatopia, or something okay. like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let me pick off the headphones for this. All right. Hi, my name is Greg Boyer. You are listening to Funktopia Radio. Enjoy. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. <laughs> nice. You can put your radio voice on. I like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. no, that's, that's, my, that's a voice I use when I don't want anybody sitting next to me on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. Now I was waiting for there. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, I just start doing the fake cost. I'm like, <laughs> no, it was funny. I, I got on the plane once, and this guy was sitting in my seat. I said, "That's my seat." He says, "I have long legs. I would like this seat." And I said, "Then you should have bought the motherfucker before I did." Now get up. <laughs> get up. <laughs> Oh my and God. he was about a head taller than me, man. I think if we were just uh, getting the scrapping, it, it, it wouldn't have been a walk in the park. But he got up. Like, he knew he was wrong. Something yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, Greg, it was such an honor to have you on the show. Yeah. I agree. Oh, I man, it was my pleasure as well, man. And Thank again, you. My apologies yeah. for, you know, letting the clock run off so much. 
Hey, can you watch this later? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, after this, uh, after it's done, Brock, it will stay on Facebook, but it's also going to be on YouTube, and then uh, the audio version will also be on iHeartRadio, on Spotify, and uh, a vast majority of different places that you can listen wow. and watch. So, well, as we call them, platforms. platforms. <laughs> That's right. <Nice. laughs> platforms. And uh, that meant a totally different thing in the seventies, though. But <laughs> <laughs> some had fish. And next week, we welcome the great and legendary Eric Leeds is going to be in the house with us next week, which is going to be lots of fun. That's going to be, gosh, I don't even know. You call me legendary. Is that going to get me a deal on a new no, Ford? You are legendary. <laughs> you are. Yeah. You looked at your resume. Oh, that's right. You're not impressed with your resume. Yeah, he's not impressed with himself. I mean, he's not impressed with himself. That's right. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> hey, you got something. No, uh, I say that. My wife always tells me on my, on my way to the gate. She says, have a good time, honey. I say, honey, I'm going to work. She says, okay, don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you were, were you about to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, um, you got something, uh, something crazy or surprising we could ask Eric Leeds next week. Uh, might throw him off. Yeah, good question. You're willing to tell us. Something crazy, something that maybe that you know, something unusual, you something like nobody else, like you might have kind of an insight on. Maybe something that happened between you two on stage that he's yeah, gonna, uh, it's gonna catch him off guard. Mm. Something that like, you know won't get him in trouble. Something like, or like, like, joke. like or me in trouble. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, we were um, I was coming, we were all huddled up backstage, and I was late getting back because uh, I was just you know out there just taking my sweet time. I get backstage to the dressing room and we're all huddled in the back and I'd see Prince sitting in the corner. He's looking all serious and the band is looking all frozen. I say, Hey man, I'm sorry. I'm late, man, but I was being held up by security. Somebody was trying to smuggle in some liquid chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in the band wants to laugh because they know how he is about meat. Right. But he just looked at me and said, you have lost your ever loving mind, <laughs> and at that point, everybody had permission to laugh. <laughs> nice. So we got to make sure that when Eric's on the show, we we tell him that uh, we heard that you were almost arrested for smuggling in liquid chicken. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna tell him that you were late to our show for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bail you out. <laughs> yeah, bond bills, man. What's that guy's name? Max Cherry. Max Cherry. <laughs> yeah. Greg, oh, thank man. you so much Another for your time. Of reference. I, I'm I'm glad that you didn't uh, get a ticket uh, on yeah. your way to the house. And uh, again, yeah. I greatly appreciate you coming on. And it's been an honor having you on the show. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Hey, man. I gotta admit, you, you know, for a split second there, I was like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. I got to go do this interview, man. Let me go ahead. We appreciate it. It's been it was great. trying to do that on a phone on the road. So I was like, I just need to just go home and just make this right. Oh, so. Well, I'm glad you weren't sitting us sitting in your car watching us crash and burn without you here. Because I think we had, <laughs> we had, I think we had like one news brief and... Um, uh, we have one news brief and one announcement that this, today is the 31st anniversary of uh, Prince's releasing of the Symbol album, which is 31 Love years to, to this day. Wow. And so, but that was the only two things that we had to talk about. It was just like trying to stretch that out over an hour, hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I see, this is what you there. say, don't try this at home. I <laughs> <professional>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The rest was scary stories. You guys are obviously good at your job, you know. So. Well, it's yeah, you make it so much easier. Thank you so oh, much man. for your time, sir. Thank you, really. Thank you so pleasure. much for joining us. Everybody, yeah. thank you for hanging, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, brother. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. Thank you so much, Greg. You guys. What does that? What makes that noise? It's a rasta horn. I do now. <laughs> Is that guy? Yes. Yeah, that well, guy up there. Yeah, and we have we have a sound effect thing, and it's a. Uh, that's a good question. What does make that rasta horn? It's called a rasta horn, and I think the last time we talked about this, somebody in the in the chat room uh, said, "Oh, yeah, at all the Jamaican uh, parties, that's something that they always play." And I was not aware of that because I was trying to why oh, they call it a rasta horn. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's apparently all right. 
Well, well, the next I, keyboard I, I buy is going to have one in it. That's for certain. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there, there's tons of other stuff in here too. Uh, oh, I, I, won't, I, I won't play any of them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Is any of them a shot of Hennessy? Uh, <laughs> I told you a bottle of Hennessy. I got you. I got you. We're taking, we're, we're taking care of you. But only for your birthday. Okay. You right. Got, you got to tell us when you get by the way. Okay. I guess it's going to be uh, New Year's then. New Year's. Yeah, I got to wait 51 more weeks now. Well, um, your L.A. show is on my birthday, so I'm going to have to come out there and I'll drink the Hennessy for you. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> we'll pour one out for you. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Out for you. So yep. When you're in driving distance of anywhere, I'm at, holding you through that, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, man, it's some good shit, man. Look what you're missing. <laughs> 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 this is like a morning show all of a sudden. What's happening here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad element, man. <laughs> that whole room full of truants. <laughs> 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 All right, sir. Annoying. Good night. Right, for Thank real you so serious, much. man. I'm out of here. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you again. Appreciate it. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yep. <laughs> Power, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Greg Boyer. He's, a, he's heading out. See you later, brother. <laughs> All right. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. And I didn't mean to actually cut them too late, but uh, this show actually gets cut off in literally 10 seconds. It stops. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Thanks, everybody. And it may cut us off, but for for the for the recording sakes, good night, everyone. Good night. (laughs) Good night. Uh, So that's four minutes. That's four hours right there. We just crossed the four hour mark. And um, so basically, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so that was a, a long show, but it was great. We got an opportunity to actually sit and talk with him. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we got everything in in that in that period of time. But man, Greg was awesome. I, we easily he would have sat here and talked for another hour. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Greg's oh, awesome. Um, yeah, so and we probably need to have him back on. We have like another horn section or whatever. And now that I know the right uh, the right Facebook uh, account to write to. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so man, it was a great show. We had a great time. A uh, lot of excessive stuff at the beginning that we can definitely cut out. Um, <laughs> I don't even remember all the stuff we talked. I about. don't either. I don't know what we talked about. I, I was getting random texts like, "What are they talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> when like, are you coming to save the show? Like, I'm uh, coming, guys. Right? Wait for me. <laughs> there, was, yeah, there was shows about. Stories about gay bars and um, oh God. trust. <laughs> and, wow! And, and and character changes and uh, okay, okay. okay. I, I don't need a recap though, but thanks. <laughs> adult, adult diapers. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, he blacked out when he told me that story, but we'll, we'll replay it for him. Uh, yeah, Patty says fix his website. Yeah, we absolutely. Yeah, ja- yeah, I will reach out to him and we will we will help him fix whatever he needs to fix. Yeah, we'll get him. We'll if get him we straight. Get on, if we can get on the good side of Greg Boyer, I mean, you know, who knows? There may be Hennessy for everybody. Hennessy on his birthday. <laughs> That's right. And New Year's. Yes, and right. <laughs> well, awesome. We're. We're still live everywhere, even though it's a four-hour show. We're still live everywhere. Well, the recording nice. stops. StreamYard stops at four hours, so they'll okay. only keep the keep a video up to four hours, and that's it. Um, Facebook but, is still live, but we can, yeah, we, we can think. Still, still talk. <laughs> yeah, we Love can still it. talk, uh, and we can still continue on doing whatever. Um, almost four more hours, huh? Four more hours. <laughs> Some of us have been here for the whole four hours. Yeah, I'm just saying. Hey, uh, <laughs> Some of us weren't getting jacked with depth charges. <laughs> right. <laughs> I had to come up. Actually getting jacked. Well, Whatever that is. <laughs> I had to come up for air. <laughs> wallowing in mediocrity while you were having your fun. Well, race cars burned rubber in my pants. <laughs> Not all of us were having soda fizzing on our lawns. Uh. <laughs> oh, I was looking for the purple banana. 
So anyway, not, uh, not even. lots of great stuff that we had. Um, yeah, we had lots of that was that was a great interview. Um, that was worth the wait for sure. And yeah. um, our editorial calendar keeps getting uh, next week. For those of you who are wondering, next week uh, we're having the great Eric Leeds is going to be joining us, and uh, I will be Ooh. reaching out to him in multiple ways, making sure that we're really clear. Daily, <laughs> hourly, <laughs> Literally, like, hourly updates. Just checking, making sure you know. We can send them uh, my calendar but, notifications. Regardless, <laughs> of on this. Put this in your calendar. <laughs> even if Facebook goes down, we're gonna be doing this on YouTube and Mixcloud and everywhere else. The show is still uh, going on. The, 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 right. the show must go on. That's correct. And sure. Then, uh, on the nineteenth of October, we will have. Martin Kember from Color Me Bad. Uh, we're going to be Ooh. talking a little bit about his history and uh, some of the really cool stuff he's doing. He does a lot of, um, he has some really, really great work. I don't know if you've ever seen him. Whenever Alfonso Starr has his parties, uh, Martin's almost always there, which is really, really cool because he does really, really great covers uh, of a lot of Prince tunes and he's uh, got a great voice and his daughter is so, so cool. His daughter is almost, uh, at a, every show I've seen Martin at his daughter's there his daughter's young uh and she's really fun and and spry and she actually gets up there on stage and she does the dances and everything so it's uh, my daughter would never do that Jaden would never get up on stage and do and do choreographed dances and stuff uh anyways um anyways uh man it was a good show thank you guys for coming i'm jeff i'm glad you were able to get here in time for the interview, but I mean, yeah. you had a, a hell of a window. Uh, I did. I did. <laughs> we yeah. tried to keep it open as long as possible. <laughs> I was, I literally was, was texting Greg the whole time going, Jeff's not here yet. Jeff's not here yet. Wait for Jeff. Let's, let's wait for Jeff. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I couldn't show up. Wait, that's, I mean, uh, I get it. I get it. I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> and then Greg texts me and says, is Jeff there? He's, like, He's here. He's here. He's, here. He's done being jacked. He's done being jacked. Uh, <laughs> oh, I being jackhammered. I got jackhammered. Uh, oh my god! Anyway. Good for you, man. All right, we will see all of you, uh, including you two gentlemen and uh, the great Eric Leeds, next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Regardless of whether Eric's here or not, at eight, we'll be here at eight. We'll be here. And we'll be here, and we will wait for Eric Leeds. Uh, as we did with Greg, and it's uh, it will be worth it all the time. Eric, just be prepared because if Eric does show up at eight o'clock, I guarantee you, um, Eric loves to talk. He's got a million and one stories. Every interview I think I've seen, he's he's like one of these guys that will just talk. So we're gonna be. I'm I'm taking advantage of that uh, with Eric in the house. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So again, next week, Eric leads. Next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then the following on the 19th will be Martin Kember from Color Me Bad. And then after that, we are working on, we're still working on, and we'll, because of the fact that it didn't get settled for the 19th, we will <clears throat> trying to do a third eye girl reunion with Hannah, Ida, and Dada. I'm having all three of them come in and uh, do a joint meeting. That'd be fun. And we talk about, third eye girl days and uh see what they're up to there are a lot of different things you want to if you want to keep up with hannah she is actively in uh doing her ministry with josh the your will be done ministries uh, you can look that up your will be done ministries and joshua and hannah welton are actively doing that and they matter of fact their show airs on tuesday night which is kind of a little bit of problematic mm. uh but we are going to try to figure out so probably the third eye girl show will be on a different night than Tuesday night because I don't want to interfere with the the scheduling and everything that they do with that uh, ministry and that happens on the same exact time. It's kind of rough. Um, but yeah. gentlemen, thank you so so much. It was a great show and um, it was a lot of fun. Everybody have fun. I thought it was a great show. I had a great time, man. I hope they did. The first two hours were shit, but I mean everything else. I mean, you great. know. Uh, and it was, I, I was doing most of the talking, so I was responsible for most of that stench. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take complete responsibility for that uh, crash and burn. But it's okay. You know, I, I need to have a backup plan. 
<laughs> just in yeah. case you need to have a backup plan you need to have somebody around to keep you guys in line <laughs> yeah see that's what we do we, we were missing you and your sound effects right. and uh, <laughs> and uh we were just missing all that <laughs> uh, cammy said the whole show was awesome but you know what do you expect from a producer well Probably thank you cammy She's one of the producers at the show, so she's got to say that. It's job security. She was like, oh, no, it was amazing, amazing. I'm just going to blindly say thank you anyways as if I didn't know. Thank you, Cammie. <laughs> and uh, don't forget, don't forget that it's on sale. We we, we do actually have it. Uh, the, the phenomenal, really cool shirts that are on sale. Don't forget, yes, they are actually on sale. They do exist. The uh, you guys have heard the commercial many many times of me saying it's funkier than a piece of broccoli riding a carrot down a celery stick. It actually does exist. It, it exists, it, and you can get it on Bonfire. Just go to Facebook, and you can get this shirt. Uh, it's it's got so many subliminal messages all happening here. I, I I'm not even going to tell you what they all are because I'm not even really totally clear what they are. <laughs> uh I, I every time i look at this photo I, i'm seeing something different like the little lightning bolt that's on the broccoli shoe i'm uh, telling you man this is like, this like a bunch of stuff happening here that is is subliminally embedded in this photo i know it uh, i never noticed this till just now but the broccoli is the only one who's not high uh, the broccoli's not high and he's doing the reach around or something right <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see, I've never seen the reach back, but yeah, yeah, the reach back. That's something, <laughs> something different. You know, un time. unlike Bigfoot, this shirt is real. This this shirt is real. You can actually get this on Bond. Depending on your definition of real, just go to uh, yeah, just go to Facebook. <laughs> go to the Facebook page, facebookcom Funkatopia. You'll see the link there. You can get this shirt. It's pretty. Get awesome. shirt, man. Uh, yeah, it's insane. I did order mine. And I have to get mine. I did order, order mine. Yeah. Uh, I ordered it with a on a jersey, with <laughs> with a green collar and the green sleeves. I made it all green, uh, and I cannot wait to get it. It's going to be amazing. Now the actual the shirt part isn't green, but I just it's going to stand out. I, I I pray that I get it before the Eric Leeds show. I want to wear this on. The <laughs> I'm going to order mine extra small. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm <laughs> hoping. Then we can see how the broccoli pops. I could tie the broccoli right down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Look at that celery stick. <laughs> That's not celery. <laughs> That's a carrot. That's a carrot. <laughs> uh, okay, four hours in. That's enough, you guys. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually strategically waiting until we get to 420 and then we're ending the show. <laughs> hey, 420, right? <laughs> we only have we only have eight minutes and fifteen seconds to get to 420. This is our 420 show. Oh. <laughs> we're actually not gonna do that. It's not worth Thank it. You. There's, there's no there's that. no win there. There's no win for those not for those, anybody. There's no <laughs> win for, for those of us that are in Atlanta. <laughs> us two that are in Atlanta, it's already past midnight already. Wait. Uh, so yes, yes. Uh, nano, nano. Uh, <laughs> it's like a backwards. I just know I got a point that way. I uh, can never get it. I know. Right. It is. I don't know why you can't get it. All you got to do is go. <laughs> All you have to do is just point it out. That's it. It's just like it's just it's it, it's the angle. It's the angle. Yeah, I just do it on the side. We'll we'll figure it out. Well, Never mind. Oh, no. I didn't realize it was going to be that freaking difficult. <laughs> it's really not. It's not at all. It's really not. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You're done. Uh, okay. It's getting. And, it's getting yeah, good. he's a programmer guy. You know, they overthink it. <laughs> right? That's what it's overthinking. <laughs> but how is it going to look in the end? Uh, <laughs> I want to get him in the eye, right in the eye. I got right. it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> says I want the rated X t-shirt. I don't know what that is. We need to make do we need to make a rated X t-shirt? We need an X version? Yes, there's I mean it's vegetable yeah. vegetable Yeah, we actually got to make uh, a So do we need to put an eggplant on it or something? <laughs> well, a kumquat. Well, you know, 
<laughs> Thanks, uh, the these new commercials, these new commercials. Uh, let me just go ahead and that say. Just sounds X-rated. Uh, well, here, let me, <laughs> before, before we go, to just kind of give you. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Uh, let me let's see if I can find it. Oh, okay. I got to load this one because I'm, <laughs> okay. Let me just play it. <laughs> hold on a second. Now, listening to Fucked Up is a very easy thing to do. All you do is you put on some headphones and you stick them in your earbuds. Or you can put it on a stereo and you can listen that way and listen to the music real loud and such. It's very simple. It's as easy as pulling a greased hair out of a cat's ass. It's so simple. All you got to do is just grab that thing and pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. Now, fucked up. There you go. That's the shirt right there. Pull, the pull, next pull. T-shirt is going to be a cat's ass with a greased hair hanging out of it. <laughs> it's got the what a hand. Go the other way. Yes, with a pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. You can jump across the bottom and we'll say pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. <laughs> and there are 19 more insane commercials just like that that are in rotation now on, on Funk Up. <laughs> just so we're clear. Um, and, and just as it's obvious by the looks on their faces, I only do these things to make myself laugh. <laughs> Nobody else. Everyone else is like, I'm actually quite I'm, aware. I'm only here for my entertainment. You know, <laughs> I hear it. that and I'm kind of violated. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right, I think that's uh, good. We're even though we're five minutes away from 420. <laughs> it, it, it seems a shame to it's, it's only just 415. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think I ever played that one before. Um, I don't think you did either. Uh, oh, there you go. I don't think I'm going to be watching the uh, Dave Chappelle special tonight. Uh, yeah, I don't think you are either. <laughs> I'm barely making it through this right now. I don't even know why the hell we're still online, to be totally honest. Yeah. Uh, just kind of just talking. And I know people that are listening on the radio version of this are like, can you just shut really up? wondering? Can we get to the music? <laughs> Play some music because I cannot stand listening to this anymore. Uh, and I don't blame you. So, with all that being said, uh, I'm going to play Let's Vagina listen. for you. <laughs> I'm going to play a Vagina for you. Uh, it is an instrument that Greg Boyer has not uh, learned how to play uh, on stage. Um, on stage. Pull, pull, pull. Just say, I would. Uh, you don't know uh, that. On stage. On stage. Oh, okay. And you don't know that either. He's a multi. <laughs> he was with P Funk. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> they did throw stuff to them. He may have time. deconstructed it and knows how to play it. That's correct. <laughs> That's right. He broke code on it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, that all being said, um, say good night, guys. Yeah, let's, <laughs> I'm gonna switch audio here over to uh, to the anything, program. and uh, we will actually play some switch audio here so I can play a little bit of uh, vagina. <laughs> That's perfect. And uh, there's actually still time for me in my my time frame, my my time zone to play vagina tonight, actually. <laughs> I don't know where everything went. Oh, man. <laughs> I have that problem sometimes, too. They're <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah, yeah, playing a little vagina now, so. All right, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. We'll see you later. Short of 420. I know it's such a shame. Good night. <laughs>